Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. So brothers and sisters, mashallah, another episode of Dawa Clinic. Uh, we'll put the link out very, very soon, inshallah. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is for a uh, for our Muslim brothers and sisters who have questions about Dawa, uh, you know, questions they may have come across uh, that they would like us to address uh, or just questions that they might have about the dawa, and inshallah we'll do our best uh, to to help and advise our brothers and sisters. Uh, what we don't know, um, we will inshallah try to find out uh, for you, so we can address those questions as well. Uh, how's all the brothers doing? Alhamdulillah. 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 Mashallah. Really well. Mm. Chris, mashallah, is going well. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, really well. The journey is going, mashallah, really well, alhamdulillah. Living the dream in the dean. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And Jordan, how are you today? Yeah, alhamdulillah, can't complain. <laughs> it sounds convincing. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can complain, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything's good, everything's good. How are you, Abbas? Alhamdulillah, everything's absolutely fine. Uh, Ijaz, brother, how are you feeling today? Alhamdulillah, I'm feeling well, just looking terrible. I hope I sound okay because I'm not on my computer. Do you forget me, you sound wonderful. It's good to be with your brothers. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, brothers, have, uh, sisters, I've put the link in the chat. Uh, if you're Muslim and you want to ask a dawah related question, uh, please click on the link. Come onto the uh, backstage. Uh, have your camera on so we can just identify you. We can see you. Uh, once we've identified you, if you wish to switch your camera off, uh, at that stage, you can switch your camera off, uh, but uh, please have your camera on in the backstage so we can, you know, so we can at least uh, see who you are. Uh, also, I would advise the brothers and sisters if you are, have got a dawah related question, please get on the stream quickly. Uh, we have times when there's like ten people, eight people waiting, and we find it really difficult then to uh, to get you all on. So please do try to get on as early as you can. Uh, brother uh, Rumzi, Jazakallah Khair for putting your camera on. Uh, you'll be our first guest, inshallah. <coughs> <laughs> wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. My voice good, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, good. That's good. Uh, Shall I just get straight to it? Uh, Please, uh, Brother Rumzi, just speak more closer to the microphone. Okay. We, we, it's a little bit. Is that better? Soft. That's a bit better, Mashallah. Yeah. A better. Okay. Good. Uh, my question was regarding um, uh, sincerity, because uh, I was in a discussion with some uh, some people earlier, a couple of days ago, and the question came about um, how would one know that they're truly sincere? Because obviously, in, in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu, sorry, in order to seek the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, has to be done with sincerity, right? Obviously, uh, you keep, there's no tricking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The question came about, you know, how would you know? I guess, how would you know whether or not you're truly sincere? Is that as a question that's I was I was a bit perplexed by. Hmm. Okay, I, I wear I wear sincere as a as 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 our own self, or as uh, how do you know someone else is sincere? Which which one do you mean? No, I mean like sincere. For example, like you know, you when you seek repentance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for your shortcomings. Right. Yeah, so you're on about you're on about your your one self, mm -hmm. or you're on about like how do you know someone else is sincere? No, no, I think Chris is yeah. saying when when you ask for forgiveness from Allah, yeah. uh, how do you know that you've fulfilled the the criteria yeah. of uh, being sincere? How do you know that you were really sincere? So you put trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yeah, and I, and I think also, brother Rumsey, um we generally, um, it's not an absolute, uh, um, you know, in, in any in any shape or form, but we know when we really mean something. You know, we, we you know, if I said to you, Brother Rumsey, come and have a cup of tea with me. Come on, let's sit, let's have a cup of tea. Yes. Now, you don't know whether I'm being sincere or I'm just being uh, civil, right? But I would have a fairly good idea of whether I really mean it, uh, whether I really want you to come and have that tea with me and sit with me and have a talk and a chat with me or whatever. I think I would actually feel it. I would feel the sincerity myself and I would recognize that I think I'm being genuine. And, and I think similarly, if I was just being, you know, um, 
just sort of uh, passing on pleasantries, as it were. But I'm not really being. I don't really want you to, uh, you know, have the tea with me because I'm busy. I need to go somewhere. I, I think I would also appreciate that as well, and I would know that as well. Uh, but then, but then Chris is correct as well because then after you feel that you were that you were sincere, that you really did mean it. After that, you have to have trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because yeah. obviously Allah will also know whether you felt sincere, whether you were really trying to be sincere, whether your intention, for example, for repentance, um, whether you truly had intended that I'm going to really try my best and stay away from this sin, inshallah, from now. On. And Allah, Allah, Allah knows you better than you know yourself. So, like you said, we can't fool Allah. Uh, but w- I think we mm-hmm. ourselves, innate, we, we sort of we recognize the fact whether we're being sincere or we're not being sincere. Yeah. Uh, that, would, that's my, my take on it anyway. I would say, Abbas, that um, can I agree with you? But for me, I'm talking personally, I can fool myself as well. I can fool myself into believing I'm sincere. And I guess the only real way, because one of the, obviously one of the things is, is, for example, your actions afterwards, you're sincere if you don't do it again. And you're not yeah. going to know that. You're not going to know that at the time. Uh, and, and I often doubt myself, am I really sincere? Am I, am I going to do it again? I guess the only way to do it is to keep working on it and um, your actions will prove whether you're sincere or not, just as yeah. opposed to what you say. But I'm I'm constantly doubting myself. I'm constantly doubting, questioning, am I sincere in all aspects, whether I'm online, whether th- things like that. And I, I think I always assume the worst of myself. And I don't know whether that's a defense mechanism, but I, I like what you said, Abbas, about, I think I don't know if it's your your uncle that passed or um, about writing off your public um, deeds, for example, because you don't know. I, I can think that I'm sincere here, giving public, you know, doing things in public and thinking the the you know receiving good deeds, but I don't know. I don't know hundred percent. You know, I, I don't really know. Uh, how, how will I ever know? Um, and so, uh, you know, for example, the, the example there is that you only really count your private deeds, don't you? Because those really have to be sincere, don't they? You're not doing it for anyone else. Mm. Um, yeah, that's that's a very theory. good point, Jordan. I think even if you feel that you are being sincere, I think it's a very, very good point, which is to still have introspection without losing faith in Allah and trust in Allah, without losing the fact that Allah is most merciful and most kind. But I totally agree with you, reflecting upon, you know, am I really being sincere? Am I really avoiding this sin in the future? Uh, Am I really trying hard or as hard as I should be? So I think that is a very good, that's a very good, um, a very good lesson really for all of us as well, is is not to just simply uh, ask for forgiveness, be confident that I was sincere, so that's it. Even though the Prophet ﷺ did say, that when you ask Allah for forgiveness with sincerity, don't live in this perpetual guilt where you, you feel Allah hasn't forgiven you. Uh, but I do agree with you, Jordan, that that does not mean to say that one does not have introspection afterwards and constantly uh, tries to better oneself. Uh, so I think I, I definitely agree with that as well. I think as much as very powerful. Uh, Brother Ijaz and Brother Imran. Brother Ijaz, what were your thoughts, inshallah? Uh, um, well, I tend to agree with the brothers. We all tend to know if we're being sincere or not. And there were certain indications, you know, that, that we can tell by, right? If you sincerely regret something, but you end up doing it again, then you may not be very sincere to begin with. Or if you find an attraction towards that thing in the sense that you obsess about it and you have the desire to continue doing it, then you may not have really repudiated that, you know, sin in your mind or that, you know, that that thing which you did. So it's all about recognizing for yourself, having, you know, doing some introspection and being honest with yourself. Sometimes the people we lie to the most are ourselves and we delude ourselves. No, and you know, we have the notion of fake piety, for example. So we honestly have to try to hear the sins that we've committed in our hearts. We have to honestly try to hate the mistakes that we've done. And we have to have hope in Allah and trust in Allah that he will guide us away from these things. But if we're not taking practical steps in terms of our belief and actions to undo the harm that we've done, then I can't say that we're truly and really sincere. So for a person, you know, Brother Ramsey, let's say you mistakenly um, 
spill tea on Dr. Imran. And every time you meet him, you keep doing it. You know, you, you may not intend to do it, but because it keeps happening and you're not taking the steps to prevent that, then you've led yourself into that position over and over again. So humble ourselves before Allah, acknowledge the arrogance that we all have. There is none of us who does not have an element of arrogance. We all carry this for the rest of our lives. It's a constant battle, task here, nafs, definitely 100%. But focus on being honest with yourself. Because if you can't be honest with yourself, you will never be able to recognize your own sincerity. That's where I wish us a couple of highlights. Actually, I'm going to just like for that. Oh, sure. Uh, just something. Um... Oh, Abbas wanted to be the staff of the show today, I see. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I think he's <laughs> muted. Yeah, he's muted. That's it. Abbas, Are you you're muted, uh, bro? Yeah, he's muted, yeah. He's still beautiful, even when he's not talking, though. Still, you know, you know the words no, are going to be. I'm, I'm yeah, feeling inspired anyway, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> he, he cannot mute. He still hasn't unmuted himself. Abbas, you're on mute, Abbas. Abbas, you're, you're muted, bro. You're muted. Sorry, this is not going to be well for me today, is it? Subhanallah. You know, I was completely mm -hmm. unintentional. I was just typing something to. Uh, and then all of a sudden, I was on the solo screen. It <laughs> well, just shows how computer literate I am. Right, it, it was an accident, right? No. no. Oh, it, was, it was definitely an accident. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but... Um, one Is thing he being actually, sincere, Ramsey? Is he being sincere on that? Allahu <laughs> Alam, right? No, but... Uh, the, um, you never know. Maybe if he does it again, we'll see if he does it again. The, um, what, what, uh, the thing is, though, one thing I kind of noticed, though, is that this might, this same kind of criticism can be applied to any internal factor like anything from belief to regret to sincerity right you know i've you, you can almost ask any person of faith you know you can ask a christian how do you know that you believe x y and z belief isn't something you can like like you know there, there you go see that, that that proves that i believe there you go it's like you, you can't like your actions your words those things can definitively prove the only one who knows for sure what you believe what you whether you truly regret is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so you know I, I felt i feel as if that question is more like a question from an atheist than from a Christian, because you can ask a Christian, you know, <laughs> how do you know you believe in the Bible? Or how do you know you believe in Jesus, right? Uh, I believe because the Bible, okay, you, it's just, it's, it's the same kind of like, only the only person who could know you is you and Allah, right? So I, I guess that's just kind of like, uh, my, my, that's kind of what but I was who thinking. Who asked like, you the question, brother? That was uh, some Who Christian, asked you the brother. question? It was some Christians on Clubhouse, yeah. and I said, and to be honest, it, that was kind of a side point, but I, I was, I just thought that kind of stuck. In my <laughs> but I kind of reflected so, on so it. So I later. agree with you completely. I think, I think it is a, it's a, a good sign is this fact that you're asking, the, you're checking yourself when you're asking the question. Yeah. You know, one of the things that the companions were concerned about is whether or not they were considered amongst the hypocrites, and they would worry about things like not being tested. If they weren't having a test in their life, they would worry, um, uh, as Allah stopped testing me because I'm, I'm a hypocrite. And this was very interesting that the fact that you you are concerned about your state of iman and your state of sincerity is a pointer that you know for you, and and all the other points that brothers have made. And and I completely agree with you. Internal states where uh, between you and Allah is going to be, uh, you know, you can do your best to try and consider and reflect upon your sincerity, but ultimately. And everything internal should manifest externally in sort of some sort of actions. So if your actions are not the signs of, uh, of something being sincere, uh, that, that will show repeatedly doing the same. Or uh, or the, the sincerity is known only to the Creator. And ultimately, like you said, Allahu Alam, you know, that's that's really the best place we want to be in. And we put trust in Allah as the, the just judge. May he forgive us uh, our shortcomings, inshallah. SubhanAllah. You know, Imran, it's very interesting, mashallah. You know, you mentioned the point of the Sahaba worried about whether they were considered amongst the hypocrites. SubhanAllah. We we have the story of uh, when the Prophet, وسلم, before his death, he gave the names to one of the Sahabi and he said, do not give these names to anybody. Uh, those names that were given, I think some 70 odd hypocrites of Medina. And it was to prevent them from getting leadership, you see and getting influential positions. But this information was only for that Sahaba. It wasn't for everybody. And then uh, Umar Khattab, anhu, he realized that he has the list. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the Sahaba said, look, I can't give you the, the names because the Prophet said to me, nobody can have the names. 
So you know what Umar Khattab did? He said, just let me know if I am not included in the list. Now, this is the second khalif of Islam, one of the mightiest sahaba that we have. And it's a powerful story because he is worried, you know, and we know that Umar Khattab was one of the most steadfast, you know, of all of the sahaba, very firm on his deen, very firm on his religion. So it's a, it's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, lesson for us as well, that, that, that we should have this concern that, you know, I'm not a hypocrite, that I'm not... Um, in, insincere. So it's a, it's a much like a powerful story, subhanAllah, you know. And like I said, it can be applied to any uh, internal, whether it's regret, belief, for any individual, whether it's a Christian, a Hindu, a Jew, it's, it, can, it can be applied to, so it's not as... Yes, if, of course, of course. Yeah, that's, that's just something I... I reflected on later. I was like, wait, hold on. You yeah. guys are Christian. You guys are Christians. If, if whether you were Hindus or Jews, you all have internal beliefs. And I can't test whether or not I can't know for sure what you believe. Or yeah. you can tell me. I can believe you. You can. But it's it's that, that, that's yeah. not that's not something definitively against Islam per se. It can be no, any, no. Yeah, brother Rumsey, you're completely surrounded by EF Dower today. Look. Oh wow. You, you can't escape. Mm-hmm. You can't get away. Salaamu alaikum, guys. Sorting out your uh, computer today. Well, hopefully, let's see how that doing that business. His camera's working. That's a start. Well, for now, uh, (laughs) start working. How are you, Ramzi? All right, bro. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I'm good. Just uh, just one day at a time. Alhamdulillah. Just every day's uh, every day's a new day. Alhamdulillah. I think I'll. Thank you for coming on, brother Ramzi. I'm hoping if Doctor Imran can respond to one of the comments that mentions. What if a person is bed bound and they can't do the actions that they think would be, uh, you know, help them with the sincerity? Does that make them by default insincere? Oh, no, that's the answer to that question. <laughs> yeah, the opposite, isn't it? So, yeah. So it's uh, this is interesting. So it's limiting actions to. Um, Ooh. Uh, uh, sorry, brother Ijaz, did you want to show yourself on camera? Or? We just see if you're not. <laughs> I'm just in bed. I'm just in bed. No, definitely not going to see me this way again. Um, so it's interesting because uh, even the testimony of faith is considered an action. Um, you know, uh, and this is uh, so there can be actions of uh, all sorts that don't require a sort of you know you being physically able. You know, you can still pray even if only your eyelids move. And even if your eyelids don't move, you can still pray. I mean, it's uh, Subhanallah. There's there's lots and lots of things that allow. Um, anyway, I, I, I would ask if the questioner is in sincere. Let me make it easy for you, inshallah. I mean, I'm I mean, that all boils down to your intentions. Do we have any other guests lined up? Has any... Uh, Abbas, you're muted, brother. We can't hear your wonderful dulcet tones. Sorry, you have completely lost all sense of how to do a stream now. <laughs> completely lost everything. Brother Ilham, Salaam Alaikum. Brother Ilham, can you hear us? Brother Ilham, can you hear us? Put the light on. Yes, brother. Put the light on. Alaikum, salam. There you go. Salaam. Salaam. Yes. Yeah, Fuck. Oh, it's in a cupboard. Switch up on YouTube, man. Brother, turn your YouTube uh, tab off and just listen to us on the on the thing. Just listen to us on the Blair, which project? Yeah, brother, your internet's actually very, very lagging. Uh, brother or sister DBK, if you could put your camera on just to identify yourself, and then we can see if we can get you on, because I think we're going to perhaps struggle. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Brother Ilham, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Yes, brother. Oh, <laughs> it's clearly. I think remove him. Yeah. Brother <laughs> Ilham, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we're, we're not going to be able to... Uh, How's it doing that? get you on brother because i think the internet is very very uh, lagging i think it's uh, surprisingly slightly worse than the hamza's uh, uh, <laughs> and camera so uh, brother <laughs> brother dbk assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you all doing 
Hamza Al Hayden got you right. Yeah, it's great to it's great to be on. Uh, yeah, so um, I kind of had a question that's been bugging me for a little while, um, and it's kind of got to do with um, the the way souls are are judged. Um, and I've been trying to think about it because, uh, according to what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the souls kind of testified um, to Allah that we recognize you. And then, and then we entered into um, the world to be tested. Um, but what I can't seem to understand is that some of the souls, I guess, were placed into um, children. And then these children would then, you know, die early, for instance. So, so, so for that particular soul, it seems like they didn't really go through a test that someone who would have gone through trials and tribulations and it's just like i understand that the test isn't necessarily doesn't necessarily need to be standardized because you know a lot takes into consideration everybody's circumstances and all that but the the children dying um i'm, I'm not too sure on how to make sense of that on on for, for that individual soul uh being placed into this earth and then for thereafter achieving paradise or well it definitely it would be paradise wouldn't it inshallah yes cool um brother hamza do you want to go first really you want me to go first on that well, no, it, well, yes I mean, yes i think oh, we all vote that hamza goes first fair. it'll get everybody oh. on isn't it is, is this really yeah. a massive issue for you mate to be well i've been thinking about it for for a few months and i'm just trying to make sense of it and you know what like uh, kind of information is scarce uh i follow you guys uh okay. quite a quite a bit and okay. what, what's yeah, the, question? Question. the first thing that comes to mind for me is if a child dies young then it will go through some kind of test will it not ah uh, so 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 that's what happens right so if 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 a child dies it's not it's yeah okay so that's what i was trying to escape i was trying to escape just a a soul that would you know go and and not get tested at all and then get to paradise but i, I yeah. guess you're what you're saying is that there would even a child would have some form of a test well surely if it's died before adulthood but so but then but then a question comes that so a child might fail a test is it well, how can a child fail a test? Well, I mean, if if it's a test, then I, I'm I, trying I to get. Think, I don't think trying... Hamza means. I don't think Hamza means that the child will be tested after its death. I think Hamza's implying and saying that death itself is a test. It's 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 it's, it's a it's a trial. The suffering, there must be there must be suffering, or I don't know. You know, is this. I think there there is an opinion that, that there is a test afterwards. So I, I'm, I'm, I looked into this topic when I was looking into you know do do non-Muslim children go to Jannah? Mm. They, they say do, you know do, when a child dies, yeah. Muslim child is guaranteed Jannah. What about non-Muslim ones? Are they guaranteed? And there are, there was differing opinions. Some go to Jannah, and there was an opinion that there is a test afterwards um, for the mm. non-Muslim children. How so do you differentiate? Like, how do you differentiate between a Muslim child and a non-Muslim child? I think it was from the parents, um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it was there was difference of opinion on this topic. I thought um, we believe all children are Muslims, but I'm pretty sure there is a test that can be done oh, after. After no, we got explained when we did that, the lessons with John. Was it yeah, but I thought all children were Muslim. No, we're born with fitra. There's there's a difference of opinion on that. Yeah, the difference of opinion on that. So so John says that we're born with mm -hmm. fitra, not born as a Muslim. Muslims want to submit and surrender to Allah. Yeah, yeah. Children follow their instincts rather than. Yeah, it's, their... it's a massive topic. This we've done this before, haven't we, Jordan? And, and yeah, <laughs> didn't go down well. But I think, like, I think, like you said at the beginning, Hamza, this a good question to DBK is what? Why is this really a big issue? Yeah, yeah. I mean... Well, you know, I, I'm, I've, I've, I've had, I guess, maybe something that kind of sparked it up was I, I've got a baby now, and I've, I've had one for. Uh, a few months and um i don't know i was just trying to it came up in my head and i and i and i tried to to make sense of it because yeah. you know if, if yeah it's it's if if kids all around the world and you know um no matter what their social social settings would have been um 
in, in any geog geography with any parents. If they died early, um, we we were you know we're kind of told that they get jenna, whereas um, you know we we so, after, yeah after adulthood you kind of you go you go through the tests. So I'm trying so, just yeah try to square that in my head and. So um, there, there's an easy way to square this in your head. I just have one yeah. question for you, brother. Is Allah just? Yes. Is, is there anyone who can be more just than Allah? No. Well, obviously does, Allah, does Allah say he will burden Israel with more than it can bear? Uh, no, yeah, he says he won't burden Israel with exactly. more than it can bear. So then we can conclude just from these two points, whatever Allah decides for a child, whether he's a believer or unbeliever, that they will get the best judgment possible. Would you agree to that? Yes. So, so, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm kind of uh, approaching the point of like, just like, deferring judgment and just saying, you know, Wallahu um, alam. Mm -hmm. I try to maybe think of it in like an impossible world scenario. God knows what that child would have, you know, that child would have done. Um, yeah. So, but, but, I mean, but rather, yeah, I'm, rather than. Rather than trying to take into consideration the things that Allah will consider when he judges a child, we can just say, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the most just. So it doesn't matter what he takes into consideration, that child will still get the best judgment possible, full stop. So we don't need to ponder too much on this. But if we do ponder, there are statements by the scholars. The first is every child, uh, so just in our minor point from earlier, we don't say that every child is born a Muslim, but they're born upon the fitrah, an inclination towards the deen. How they are raised determines the religion that they follow, the ideas yeah. and thoughts that they have in regards to God. So the scholars say a child who is growing up as a Muslim, living in a Muslim home, believing in Muslim uh, ideas and beliefs, this child goes to Jannah, there's no doubt about this. As for the non-Muslim child, the scholars have a difference of opinion. One valid opinion is that all children, regardless of their belief, go to Jannah because they're children. They can't be held accountable. The other opinion is Allah will take into consideration the things that they would have done in their life because he is all knowing and he knows the actions that they would have done. And so he judges them based on this. The final yeah. option is that Allah neither punishes nor rewards them. There is a place in between for, the both, uh, for such a child who is a non-believer. But in any case, Whatever the state of that individual, that child, we know that Allah will have mercy and be very just towards them, and we leave it at this. If we ponder too much on it, brother, just a point of note here, we believe Allah is the most merciful, the most gracious. 113 surahs of the Quran begin with this ayah. We hmm. accept and we believe in this, so what is the point in fussing over the minor details? This you know is what? where we are contented yeah. with Allah. Yeah, no, you you got you guys actually like you, you did square in my head, you know, and 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 I'm glad I did ask the question because it it has been bothering me, but I'm pretty satisfied with uh, with the response. Uh, just just a quick one, a much easier one. Uh, what what what? How like um, something that I've been trying to do in my life is is uh, ensure that uh, I stay sincere with 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 my actions. Um, sometimes I forget. Sometimes it's how, how do you guys. Ma like is there is there a method that you kind of use to maintain that sincerity um when it comes to your everyday life Just make sure Brother, to be really honest we're in the same boat as everybody else and um you know we constantly have to remind each other we constantly have to reflect upon our own actions um you know just standing up and giving dawah at Swigas corner or doing these live streams uh, you know, we have to constantly ask ourselves, um, you know, when somebody makes a positive comment, does that make us happy? When somebody perhaps makes a negative comment, um, do we feel like we've been treated badly, even though the comment might be correct? Uh, the negative comment might be correcting us because of something that we've done or the way that we've done it. And, you know, does it affect my ego? And these things we have to go through ourselves, brother, to be honest. It's, we... May Allah forgive us where we fall short, um, but we're all in the same boat. We're all trying to strive and trying to hopefully, uh, you know, please Allah and 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 keep our egos at bay um, and and ensure that our intentions are purely for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And I think it's a very difficult thing to, to do. We're not perfect, and 
uh, may Allah forgive us, probably at times things, you know, do happen or things are said and what have you, and that we perhaps, um, um, you know, um, react in a way maybe that we shouldn't. So may, may Allah sort of forgive us. But I think we're just striving and we should just continue striving uh, and mm. continue having introspection uh, and continue to ask ourselves, am I really doing this sake for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to please Allah, to obey Allah, um, and, and, and just co constantly checking ourselves, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, try, appreciate try all the work yourself. you guys have done. Yeah. Try to surround yourself with uh, people of Allah, so people who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because I remember when I first became Muslim, I, was, uh, I had these struggles and that, and then when I started surrounding myself with people who spoke about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I started to realize that I was a, I was very insincere as a person, very like uh, arrogant, and that's how I changed these these because people the people around me telling me that you know, reminding me that you know praying you have to pray and stuff like that. We all yeah. fall short, uh, definitely. We all fall short. We're not we're not perfect. Yeah, I think that's a great great point because well, sincere has been mentioned twice now, and I'm thinking what what is sincere? What does it actually mean? And I guess as a Muslim, being sincere is doing things for the sake of Allah, isn't it? Yeah, uh, that, that really that really what sincere is uh, what we're talking about, and I guess I agree with Chris in a sense. For me, if if I'm if I'm on my prayers, if I'm God conscious all day long, I'm far likely to be insincere. I'm far likely to fall into any of the stuff that I would do if I wasn't on it. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I, I agree with Chris. And, and for me, I guess it's it's making sure I'm on my prayers, making sure I'm doing it on time. When I do that, I, I feel that the rest sort of takes care of itself. Yeah, it's, it's it's always whenever there's some any form of a potential uh, worldly benefit that might occur from from a particular mm. act that you take, and then it's just like it's yeah, having to remind yourself that you're you know you're doing this for for something else. Um, yeah, that's it a tends good point, to come from being it tends to be, come from being becoming stagnant within yourself rather than. You know the things around you. Sometimes it's yourself that you've become stagnant that much that you know you've you've forgotten to do something that was helping you, like doing zika and stuff like that, and implying them into your life, and things will change eventually. And I noticed that in myself is that when I become stagnant, I tend to like become very doubtful of myself, very, uh, very. Uh, intimacy with, with certain things as well so just trying to keep consistent with what you're doing praying doing zika remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah any of the other brothers want to uh, make a point uh, Dr Imran or just just to tie the two things together the two questions together ultimately we none of us whoever enters paradise will be entering paradise because we we've earned it in some way it's going to be because Allah grants us His grace and mercy, as, as we have the hadith from the Prophet peace be upon him, Allah, that uh, none of us will, none of you, none of us will enter paradise because of our deeds. And, and, they, and the companions asked, "Not even you, a messenger of Allah?" And he said, "No, not even me." Sallallahu He said, "Not even me. Only if the mercy of Allah, the grace of Allah, covers us." So, ultimately, all of us, whatever state we're in, uh, whatever age we're in, the, the the actual reason for entering paradise is because Allah gives us His mercy. We are never, we're never going to be in a position, even that newborn or whoever, we're never going to be in a position that we automatically deserve the Jannah. It's it's a, it's almost it's a gift. It's from Allah in His prerogative, His mercy to give us that gift. And may Allah keep us all sincere, inshallah. And uh, Jazakallah khair for your questions, brother. Alhamdulillah. Just, Thank you so much. I just wanted yeah. to. Um, who just disappeared? Just asleep. He jazz. Oh, he jazz. Um, yeah, what Jordan said about what is sincere. It, um, it, sincere basically means, isn't it, the, the reason why you do something? Do you get? Yeah, so the way I'm, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's the, it's the reason why you do something, and it's it, like I, I, what, what I mean by sincere. Well, why, why, why do we pray? Towards... Why, you know, when we pray, fudge on your own. What, what, yeah. If you pray, what's the reason you're doing it? Are you doing it to show off? Well, no, because no one's there to see you. So yeah. I, I, I think the, these are important things. You know, um, who is it who said, Hamza Tota said this very well, mashallah, to increase your iman and such, is try to do a deed each day that nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. So if you, maybe if you see a homeless person, just leave some food next to them or just try to do a deed each day that only, only you and Allah know about. 
unless that will increase your iman and your sincerity. Because you know you're not doing it to show off to people. You only, all you're doing is to please Allah. And I think that's where the reason why we do what we do, to please Allah. You know what I mean? So when we do dawah, I mean, we're not claiming perfection. SubhanAllah. And, you know, sincerity is, is, is a hard thing to contain, especially when you start becoming a little bit um, more known. So, you know, oh, am I, am I doing this for fame? Am I doing this to show off to the people? Am I showing these people that I'm intelligent? And do you get me? It's very, very hard. And it gets harder and harder each day. But um, that's how you counter it, is try to do something that no one knows you've done, inshallah. Well, th thank you all for the great advice. I really appreciate it. And uh, and thanks for everything you guys have been doing. I've been following God uh, so for, for a very long time. And and um, you guys are doing a wonderful job. So thank you. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah. Jazakum Allah. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> just a quick one. I just need to address because that antinatalist is bleating in the comment section, right? About why do we need to show our faces? All right, make it easy for you. We see your faces, we see who you are. So even if you sneak through as a troll, yeah, you won't sneak through twice because we know your face. That's it. You don't need to show it on screen. No one needs to know who you are. Backstage, the only people who can see it is us. That's it. All right, so stop bleating in the comments. <coughs> They're all doing their hair now. Yeah. See them. <sighs> okay, so the next guest <laughs> we have is uh, Ibn Lahad. Uh, Islam alaikum. Thank you for having me on again. Wa alaikum salam. Now, forgive my cough. I'm a little sick. Um, I have a question about um giving dawah to people who are uh, say uh, of the Zoroastrian religion. I'm asking because I watched a uh, stream on. Hamza's den and someone named Cyrus was talking to Hamza and he brought up something about Cyrus the Great actually being in the Bible. It's a, this was a few weeks ago, but it, that kind of got me thinking like um, we don't usually cut. Well, me personally, we don't you Muslims don't usually come into contact with um, members of this faith. So I, I have a very um, basic understanding of it. But like, how would you guys go about doing that? Well, me personally, if someone comes up to me and says, I'm a Zoroastrian, and I believe it's the truth, why do you believe that? <laughs> That's it. And then, then I'd let them explain to me why they believe Zoroastria is the truth. And I'm pretty sure, as, as Islam is the haq, as we believe Islam is the truth, there'll be something in that explanation that just ain't going to make no sense. And I truly believe, I mean, I don't know about Zoroastrian. And if, if someone came to me and said, I'm a Zoroastrian, this or the other, and he wanted to debate in this, I'd be like, relax. First of all, let me try to understand. I, I would actually try to find out about it. I hate debating when I don't know what the subject matter is. It's stupid to do so. It becomes arrogant in that way. So um, I've never had somebody come up to me, I'm a Zoroastrian. I don't know whether that Cyrus guy who's trying to place Cyrus the Great into the Isaiah 42 um, is a Zoroastrian. He identified as such. He didn't identify as a Zoroastrian, I don't believe. In, in the comment section. Oh, I don't, I don't know what they say in the comment section. But the point is that um, I've never, he's never, I've never, a, a Zoroastrian has not come up to me and says, I'm a Zoroastrian, and I believe Islam, it's Zoroastrianism is the truth. I'll be honest with you. From what I understand, they worship fire in the sense of because it gives heat and light and stuff if i'm not wrong but um, pu it purifies your sins basically is it yeah something along those lines but if it's not islam it ain't the truth mate and it's just a matter of digging so on on this point you know uh, you have to ask them to begin with why do you accept zoroaster to be a prophet why do you accept the message that he brought um, secondly, when it comes to Cyrus the Great, the uh, Old Testament in Isaiah, I think it's just after 42, could be 47 or 49, it mentions that Cyrus the Great was a messiah in the Jewish religion. So a lot of Jews historically considered him to have converted and became a monotheist without practicing the law. Right, So he restored monotheism to, um, that, uh, to Palestine at that time. Thirdly, when it comes to the beliefs of uh, Zoroastrians, uh, between the 7th century and the 9th century CE, because Islam, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in the 7th century, you find that there's a great cultural exchange between Islam and Zoroastrianism. Uh, what you actually begin to see is in their own writings, they begin adopting the beliefs of Muslims. 
we had an indirect and sometimes a very direct influence on their beliefs. And so some of the way in which we pray, you could potentially argue um, beliefs regarding Jannah and Jahannam, beliefs regarding the ascension of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We find in their writings, after the Prophet's lifetime, them adopting these beliefs. So there were simple questions you can ask any Zoroastrian. To begin with, where does your creed or doctrine come from? Why do you accept Zoroaster to be a prophet? And why is it we find in this great culture of exchange, Zoroastrians taken from Islam? If Islam was a false religion, you know, they wouldn't be taken from it. The fact that you borrow from Islam tells me that your religion is dependent on Islam, and therefore Islam has to be the necessary truth in this case. So you can have conversations like this if you want, but to keep it short, yes, I do accept Hamza's point. Why do you believe what you believe? Is this reasonable? What are the evidences you have for this? And this is called the principle of sufficient reasoning. The principle of sufficient reasoning. It's a brilliant question to ask and may Allah make it easy for you. Amin. 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 Um, Right. Uh, who has uh, shown their their faces on the on the back chat that we can get them on next? Are you leaving it in Lahadah? We got the um, Chris's fellow ginger northerner. Yeah. yeah. Where has he gone? Oh, there he is. Okay. Uh, Reva bin, bin, AKA. Bin <laughs> If I brought it down, bro, you'd love it. <laughs> Hopefully, it tastes better than it looks. Yeah, it looks amazing, man. It's, I mean, it tastes amazing too, believe. <laughs> I thought the job job camera, down, if you want to add my two pence to if people want to ask any questions, if I can answer anything that no one else may know, not that. There could would be anything that maybe can add my two pence if needed, inshallah. So I'm joining you guys if and this oh, is okay. Well, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So for the brothers and sisters that don't know, uh mashallah, we have many other members as well of EF Dawa that are on the brothers group. And so mashallah, we are joined by Dan today, mashallah. Uh okay, so a couple of other brothers waiting in the back. Um Dan. Here we go, Brother Abdul Rahman. Oh, hello. Oh, man. How are you? How are you guys? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. How are you guys doing? This is an honor, really. Like, like, really an honor. I love you guys. You are what what the woman needs, really, in these uh, troubled times. Uh, myself, I'm trying to actually do my part. Uh, I'm like a gamer. I know it's a bad habit. I'm trying to get rid of it. Trust we me. All gamer. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no, it's like I am a gamer for like 12 years now. I I consumed a lot of time gaming, <laughs> and I'm uh, like really. We give uh, this question to Ijaz. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear what? that. <laughs> sorry, what? No, no, no. It's not. It's not. I'm not asking to get rid of it. I am actually trying. It's like you know when an alcoholic it. comes on and goes, "I've been, I've been an alcoholic for 12 years," and that's <laughs> my <laughs> Thankfully, no, I wasn't no. an alcoholic. Thankfully. Yeah. Oh man, that's. Uh, I imagine that was hard. Um, um, my question really wasn't about gaming or anything. Um, I, I meet a lot of people, uh, atheists specifically on the gaming communities I'm in. And I try to formulate sort of an argument against atheism, uh, atheists. And um, um, I'm trying, like right now, I'm just trying to d uh, lay out the argument for you guys. That way you can book holes at it. That way I can refine my argument if that's, if that's okay. Because, uh, because I meet a lot of atheists that, uh, that try to combat my argument. And uh, so far, so good. Nobody could uh, use use any tools against it because I, I majorly took it from you guys, which is infinite, infinite regression thing. And uh, and uh, there is like the non-existence, the non-existent proof of anything being true other than Islam, really. Um, evidence, even like not 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 even physical evidence. It's like logical evidence. And uh, so far, so far, I understand that uh, when I tell when I tell my friends, my atheist friends, uh, this um, God 
they would tell me everything started from nothing and uh, the, co- the cause of the universe is nothing. So firstly, I lay for them the infrared regression problem. And they they suddenly, okay, we have no answer for that. But the, the answer every time is, well, science will figure it out at some point. It's like, okay, if you want to stay a billion years until science figure it out, that's not really a solution. Uh, so that's my first line uh, of, of defense or offense, really. And, uh, and then I'll tell, I tell them, well, God, God made the universe. Yes, he created the universe all from the first bang, the first big bang, whichever, which that the, fir- the one that we observed is the first or the second or the 15th, whatever. There is one that was the first at some point which had to have God creating it or causing it. And uh, from that, God basically made everything happen from just one, one uh, bush. Abdul Rahman, yeah. can I interrupt you, my brother? Sorry, what? Yeah, fad- yeah fad- Do you have a question? I'm sorry. I am nervous. That's why I'm talking too much. Sorry. No problem. Do you, have, do you have a question? He's giving across his argument, I think, then wants us to help refine it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, so I, you, I have, you know, in your um, in your gaming communities, how does it work? Are you like guys going around like like that, and then like, yeah, you're an atheist, and like, how, no, how's no, it, so, you, so basically, because I'm a Muslim, and uh, like rarely they talk to any Muslim that's gaming in the communities I'm in, I was in so far. So they like to ask questions about Islam, and eventually it goes down to, okay, why do you believe that Allah is a thing or He exists in the first place? But yeah, so basically I try to go down that that our whole argument that I basically heard from Hamza the first time. Sorry, I'm Muhamza because I'm a I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so yeah, uh so that's that's basically my argument. But I'm trying uh I well I try to solve some problems that they showed to me in my argument on my my argument was um was basically god intervening the intervention of god every time or allah i should say as a muslim uh every time he intervenes with with something you could find a logical explanation for it but for that time they it was a miracle it was a 100 percent miracle so it, it doesn't matter if you find today an explanation for it back then it was miraculous enough for them to to think that's a miracle. So, so brother Abdurrahman, let's yeah. let's deal with inshallah one question at a time. So let's deal mm-hmm. with the notion that mm-hmm. they tell you that everything comes from nothing. Yeah. So Dr. Dr. Imran, I'd like you to get in there first, inshallah. Uh, this notion of everything coming from nothing, how would you tackle that uh, that argument? Yeah. Um, I think I think um it's a nonsensical statement, isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, I, the, the, the way I sort of explain to my children, and really this is sometimes what you have to do is, if you don't have any money in your pocket, can you give it to somebody else? And yeah. the answer to that is no. And and I've, I think a couple of times on a stream I've asked the question, can a woman give birth to herself? Mm-hmm. Um, these sorts of things to get people to realize that actually, you know, zero plus zero plus zero is always going to be one to uh, quote a poem um so ultimately if we define nothing as is understood as the absence of everything so that means no quantum fields no m brains whatever people might posit because these are by definition things if we define definition uh, if you define nothing as being the absence of everything then that itself has no potential to even change into something because yeah. even that potential to change has to be coming from something and so there's no really, evidence even there's no evidence for anything coming out of nothing even in the quantum level like the quantum field theory doesn't even show you anything at being out of nothing so it's like totally i would say big bs but yeah <laughs> it's, it's nonsensical yeah. like i said so th- so the way to so even i mean that would also apply to us but obviously the because you someone could say to you well you know how can you say something came out of nothing but we don't mm-hmm. say that what we say is that there has to be something always. And ultimately, there, there has to be something foundational, which is what everything else depends upon. 
-hmm. And whatever that thing is that we would say that necessary being, necessary existence has to be what we would call the creator because everything else depends upon that. Uh, it's a, it depends. I mean, I'm, it's, it's really hard to get these nuanced things across even in a normal discussion. So I'm surprised. Yeah. I wonder how you're doing it when you're playing. Uh, which games do you play, bro? Well, Oh, I, I play a lot of games. What what guys, I've, got, I... I've, got to go. I've got to go. Oh, I've got to go. Uh, remind, you, you remind and I'm going to come, guys. Dan, 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 is um, Dan, you're my substitution. Where's he gone? Uh, well, I, think it's I, uh, I played, be, be like, majorly, I played EVE Online, if you ever heard of it. But, uh, uh, yeah, so... Uh, the people that I the people that I talk to majorly um, because the games I play are not like just a shooter game for example I play I try um, my mind doesn't doesn't like the the quick and quick games like fast games and just leave I I like to spend time in a game to understand and plan and stuff so the people kind of people that I meet is logical most of the time. Like they're 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 average and and IQ, you know, or above average sometimes. So I can get the point across. What sometimes. game do you play? Uh, Eve Online. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys play some shooter games. What what is it? Which which one is it? I'm not a gamer. I, I, I play game. Ark Survival. Ark. Oh oh no, I don't play Ark. I don't like I've Ark. Ark for a yeah. while. Um, I'm thinking of playing that Van Halen, the Viking Lex. Next. Oh, you know, well, I'm also I, thinking I of doing this uh, virtual reality stuff because one I brother invite, I, invited me onto the metaverse. Into this, metaverse. Um, oh man, oh my god, this... yeah, no, what they've done, they created the first message <laughs> in the metaverse, and they've, they've oh, got a speakers, oh, oh. and they've got a, they've got a virtual speaker's corner. So, effectively, that's awesome. I could, I could go onto the metaverse with Ejaz, and we could mm -hmm. go up and give Dawa as if we're at speaker's corner. With I Christian would join atheists. you guys a hundred percent. I yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing it. opportunity to be honest, and and to drag I, them out into the real world. Join you. Oh, but man, game wise, I, I've, I've I've give Dawa playing FIFA online uh, one time. I, I I I do I do give Dawa every time I'm I'm playing anything I'm I'm playing. If if there's a a chance someone wants to understand anything about Islam, I just go on. And if he gets bored, I stop, of course. But is and, and if he try like pulls back, yeah. I I sense it and pull back, you know. But Ben Ikra had a go at doing Dawa through the games as well, trying going on Twitch to get the gamers and such. Do you get me? Mm. Yeah. But, um, there's so I, look, where, there, where there's people mm. and people willing to listen, and you got time. Yeah. You can always speak about these things. Well, otherwise, speak about EastEnders or football or whatever, or you can speak uh, yeah. about world views, especially uh, obviously the other the way yeah, the other great thing about the Quran as well, it actually gives you a mechanism within it to actually uh, argue. The, the Quran can argue from itself. In the Quran, it says, "I'm calling me a great shaitan. I'm from Makalikum. I'm Kalakum Mustamawati. What Adbala Yakinon? Was you created from nothing, or was you yourself the creator of yourself, or did you create the heavens and the earth? Rather, you are not certain. So the the Quran, the Quran has this within it to prove itself. So very good air from the Quran because that could be more powerful, inshallah. Yeah, yeah, I d I did get a lot of ways to talk to people and arguments from actually the Quran, uh, but I the, 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 my my mindset when I'm talking to atheists actually first came from Hamza watching Hamza first time. Uh, I'm Hamza. I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, uh, first you don't time. need to say I'm all. Don't worry, mate. Oh, okay, uh, all right. Sorry, I I just I'm used just to just say just say that. Uncle Egyptian Uncle Hamza. Stuff. Just say I'm that That's fine. That works. And uh, and like the 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 argument that you gave, uh, it's it's actually it helped me a lot to help those people, or actually at least tell them that Islam is not the thing that you see in media, social media. And well, that's I have the first thing. If that's what they've been exposed to, bro, that's that's definitely where you've got to go down first. And present. I agree with yes. that. I have honestly, and I'm, thank God, I have, or Allah, I honestly managed to change some opinions in, uh, amongst my friends when it comes to like the viewing Islam uh, from the uh, a media lens, and they're like, "Oh man, this is what we see in the in the media is completely 
it's not Islam, basically. That's not Islam. It's the complete opposite of Islam. Uh, I mean, these suicide bombers, if they believe they're going to heaven by doing that, I mean, that first of <laughs> right. all, that would be an innovation, damn the bidder buster, yeah? It's an innovation, first of all, because knowing the Quran on Sunday, can you blow yourself and go to heaven? So that would be an innovation, and innovations in the hellfire. Second of all, a suicide bomber that does that to themselves, the last days that they will carry on doing that to themselves up until the day of, well, forever, forever and ever. So... Like, I don't even know where to get this idea from, man. This college mentality, I guess, you know? Madness. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so my, my arguments would start, uh, like like uh, Brother Amran was saying, um, the infradigression thing, and this, this, this nothing can can start out from nothing, logically, because there's no evidence of that. And then, okay, how did God create everything? And how is how are we free? This is a big problem with most of my friends. Uh, what's freedom? You know, God gave us free choice. Uh, well, I I understand it in the following way. Well, I ha- I hope my language is good enough to actually uh, explain what I understand. So, because God is outside of time, or Allah, I keep so I'm missing out. It's sorry. You can uh, use you can use the word God, bro. It's all right. <laughs> really? We don't I, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, the word uh, Allah comes from two Arabic words, Al Ilah, meaning the God. Anyway, you know, if you can use the word God, it's fine. Yeah, I just feel it's wrong sometimes because they we used God in so many weird ways that it feels wrong to say God. God be a capital G, bro. As long as it's a capital G, it's fine. Okay. okay. Are, so, you gonna, are you going to speak a capital G? I don't know. <laughs> I'm a language. I'm an Arab. Oh, you're oh. God. I don't know. Well, I, I so, think Brother Abdul Rahman, just keep the just keep the discussion with the uh, the atheists a simple one, mm-hmm. and I I think just uh, I, I like the argument of dependency, mm. which is that. Anything that is dependent requires an explanation outside of itself, and you yeah. can't have a se- an infinite series of dependent things. Yeah, basically. And so there has to be a beginning, and this is rational, this is logical, it's a d- deductive argument, okay? Uh, and because the premise are sound, the conclusion is sound. Now, if they say to you, well, I believe things can happen from nothing, then say, well, it's just a belief, baseless, irrelevant, yeah. baseless of evidence, right? Yeah. Now, if they insist that that's what they believe, then well, that's their belief. That's that becomes their religion, in fact. Yeah. Well, show me that your evidence at this at yeah. this point. I so mean, just as they ask for where? evidence of God, then you'll have to say, well, I'll ask you know, the, the, you know, the the very fact that the universe exists. Uh, it shows us that there has to be something that preceded it mm-hmm. and that it couldn't have just come about from nothing. And I think just let them digest this sort of uh, uh, this, <laughs> this question. Uh, I, I think also if somebody's being completely, in, in, you know, disingenuous where they, they insist that things can come from nothing. I just leave them alone. I yeah, mean, and then, you, then you have to sort of think to yourself, well, look, if, if, if you worthwhile. Well, if you believe that, yeah. then um, and you have no logical basis or evidential basis exactly. to believe that, mm-hmm. and if it goes contrary to everything we see and we know, which is that a dependent thing requires something outside of itself, then again, like as I said to you, that just becomes sort of their their religion. We've got quite a lot of other bro- uh, brothers and sisters yeah. uh, brother, mm-hmm. brother waiting, inshallah, brother uh, Abdul Rahman. Jazakallah khair for coming on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will see you guys later. If Take it's care, my brother. Assalamu alaikum. Keep it the good fight. Assalamu alaikum. All right. So let's get brother. So, sorry. So is it Cyclone is next, inshallah. Okay. Let's get brother Cyclone. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Brother Cyclone, can you hear us? Brother, your internet is lagging, um, so we'll probably move to the next guest, inshallah. We'll try to get you back on shortly, uh, if you have better connection. Uh, Brother Nuruddin. Yeah, I wasn't ready, to be honest. I'm just on, on my way to Chicago, I'm parking, just what was watching you guys. 
want to say thank you very much for your good work. And, um, you know, the best thing that I always do Saturday um, and even today, I always watch you guys and I love watching you and I appreciate you guys and what you guys doing. Uh, uh, you know, I got a question. Uh, you know, I live in the United States, although my English is not that well, but um, I'm a track driver. I train some students with me, you know, to go and uh, just, I, I, I see them, how they live with me, you know, sometimes, you know, as track drivers, sometimes it just uh, depends how hard we work. Uh, we don't get time, to be honest, to take showers. So me as a Muslim, I pray and I wash myself and I do all those things. But my students, you know, you know, we had not, they just go and use the restroom, whatever, but they just use, uh, you know, paper or whatever. And I try that you see me as a Muslim, how clean I am, even though uh, I did not get a chance to take shower, I'll be always clean. And I see how they act, you know, when they are just, you know, they had like three days not taking shower when it's very hot. And I see them, how they act and they feel just smelly and stuff like that. And it's very hard to explain to them the beauty of Islam and uh, just in a way that, that makes them feel they are dirty, you know. I just don't want to say that to them, which I have to say it, you know. I cannot just tell them, hey, I'm clean and you guys look, look at this and that. So um, I want you guys to elaborate on that and see how I have to act and talk to them in this matter. And that's it. Brother Jordan, was there a question? Yeah, so if let me, um, I'll try and summarize what I understood. Uh, you were going down the hygiene route, which I think is a, a really good thing in Islam. The hygiene, I mean, everyone respects good hygiene, don't they? Regardless, you look around the animal kingdom and they spend all day cleaning. Uh, naturally, clean cleanliness and hygiene is very important. And since becoming Muslim, I'm certainly a lot cleaner than I ever was. Um, was, was your comments about maybe us using that in terms of a dawah uh, um, hygiene aspect? Uh, well, I think from what I understand, yeah, uh, guys, the brother has students with him when he's on the road. And when, they, when they're on the road, obviously they see the brother doing his wudu and you know, keeping himself clean. Ah, and the brothers themselves, the, the students that are with him are not able to do, they don't do that because they're not Muslims. And he wanted to use this as a dower opportunity, I think. If that's what, is that what I understand, brother? Is that right? Mm. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah. 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 yeah that's it just, uh, you know, it's very hard to explain to them. You know, it's just when you talk to them, they make, you know, they make, you know, they seem like, you know, um, uh, you know they want to attack me or something. You know, uh, how, how dare you? They say that to us. You know, um, it, it makes me feel like that I'm um, embarrassing them mm. or make them feel so bad. In a way that you know, I, I want totally the opposite for them. You know, uh, I want them to be clean. You know, <laughs> they, they live with me, but some sometimes we just can't take shower. You know, we, we drive in, we just you know, in a hell, and we just go and drive for days. So, you know, uh, it's it for me. It's just very hard to to deliver that message to them. You know. Uh, yeah. Have you ever, have you ever explaining the um, because obviously the reason as Muslims we clean ourselves isn't the same as a non Muslim, is it? We're literally purifying ourselves for Allah as we're praying and stuff like that. Have you ever spoken about those kinds of things? Because it's not just, oi, lads, go and have a shower. It's not that kind of thing, is it? You're actually washing, you're actually doing a yeah, ritual. I, you're actually doing a ritual. Your, your, your wudu is part of your worship. Um, exactly. Yeah. Place. Even though you're not, you're not doing wudu, you just go and clean yourself. You know, you can't. You know, when we have, uh, you know, in America, we don't... <laughs> okay. <that's good. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't take shower for three days. That means you know you, you got a lot of things to do. You know, and um, it, it, you know, in America, we don't have this thing in the toilet that you can wash yourself like in you know Arab country or whatever. Um, <laughs> And they see me doing that, and they'd be like, they think uh, because they're not with me on the toilet, they will just think that I'm, 
bitty ass like them. But I'm sorry to say that. But uh, uh, how can I say it? Uh, they see me take this bottle, water, whatever. They'll be like, oh, oh I see a lot of bottle waters in the restroom. <laughs> what, what the hell are you guys? <laughs> I can throw something in go here. On, um, what you can do is do the Mars bar test on them. And just, just uh, do I don't want to hear what that is. <laughs> to elaborate. So, <laughs> it, it's not even just the Mars bar test. It can be any chocolate bar. So tell them, take a chocolate <laughs> bar and, and, and rub it on their arm. Uh, and then take yeah. some tissue and, and wipe it off. And then smell their arm. Okay. I was going to suggest. So, uh, I was going to suggest uh, that your, your, your dower shouldn't be that they have clean backsides. Maybe your dower should be more. Yeah, I, I can't, you know, that's why I don't want to be rude. You know, I don't want to be rude to them. You know? well, sometimes you just have to be direct and say, "Look, I mean, if you're confused about the water, and then and then you take the water, pour it on the arm, rub it off, no smell it." Brother, and, 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 and this is part of our religion. No, this is something you're not going to see on Fox News. Yeah, this is part of what we, what we are, why we do it. This is why, you know, when some people say, even your God tells you how to use a toilet. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not yeah. something we should be ashamed I, I, of. Yeah, one day I told them, like, you know, imagine you are in the tree and all of a sudden, you know, a bird just, you know, uh, get something in your head. What you will do? Will you just <laughs> wipe it off or clean your face with water? You will just, oh, I'll clean my face with water. That's the same thing. Be like, okay, it's the same, just do the same thing, you know. Brother, if you're brother cleaning Nuruddin, your my, yes, my yes. advice to you would be don't make this an issue. Mm, that's what I was saying. The reason why I'm gonna tell you not to make this an issue is because according to all of the four madhab, washing is not compulsory. Okay, okay? according to the sharia. Washing is not farad, it's not compulsory, but it is highly desirable. And the Quran refers about a certain people, uh, and the, the, we were told <coughs> the reason why it referred to them as purity, with purity, one of the reasons was that they used to wash themselves. Okay? So that's why I'm going to say to you, don't make it an issue. And this advice goes to our Muslim brothers and sisters as well. If you are in a situation where there is no water... Yes, sir, you're breaking up. Not okay. Sure. If you are in a situation yeah. where there is no water, then according to all the four madhab, if, as long as you wipe yourself in, in as clean as possible way, you can still do your wadu and you can still do your salah. Okay? But... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within the Islamic culture, it is highly preferable wherever there is water available that we purify ourselves, even in the bathroom, uh, even whether it's number one or number two. If the water is available, we wash ourselves. But I would suggest to you, brother, don't make this an issue for the dawa. The, the issue for okay, the dawa. Um, I, I, yes, sir. I get your point. But the thing is, you know. When you live in a tight space and you you <laughs> understand <laughs> the necessity of this matter, it just not, uh, we don't have access to shower that often. You got what I mean? So when you live in a tight space, especially in track that's too small, and you can smell what's going on, you know, you just, you know, it's pretty bad, you know, and mm -hmm. this is the trick that you understand the difference between a Muslim or a non-Muslim. You know, not some some non-Muslim people they do wash themselves, and some of them, some some of my students, they do that, you know. Uh, but the majority of them, they just don't do it, you know. Uh, maybe lately in the COVID situation, when they uh, we have a shortage of uh, paper towels. Uh, they start doing this. Uh, brother, but brother before Nuruddin, that, just... brother Nuruddin, yes, sir. Th there is a difference between your living environment in your truck with your workers and then making it a concept or an aspect of the dawah. 
You understand what I'm saying? Your your discomfort yeah. of being it, it with people who are like that is really the, 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 the sort of thing that you need to deal with, of course. But I would suggest make the dawah something that becomes a bridge between you and them, as something that is easy for them to cross right. over. Uh, and so make the dawah differently. So when you wash yourself, like Jordan said, make it about not just a physical cleaning, but a spiritual cleaning of, of connecting to the creator, preparing you for the creator. Uh, and when they ask you questions about why do you pray or how often do you pray or what the basic tenets of Islam are, uh, you know, go into the dawah on those points. Uh, basically, look, telling somebody you're dirty is not a good way of doing dawah. Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, this is your entry say point. Is the dawah, well, the entry point. Why not? <laughs> why why not teach something tangible it. and rational? Why 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 should it not be a matter of that? I don't understand that. Because telling someone that they're dirty is not a good way of doing dawah. I think personally. No, you're not telling someone's dirty. You're saying look, the way you've been doing things all your life. There's a better way. That that's different, but I, I would well, say no, it's, the same. Make, it's the same. But when I became make... a Muslim twenty years ago, no. when I became a Muslim twenty years ago, we didn't grow up learning to use water after using the toilet. Maybe the posh people did with their B day, but we didn't learn that thing. But I, I, one wanna, of the things I that wanna, fascinated, I'll, you know, to be honest, I want to show that they, 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 they don't have access to shower and stuff like that when they be in this type of, in this situation. How I can you know keep myself clean. And when they're not actually able to do that, when they feel themselves, they, they tell me they are, they feel it horrible. You know, when you stay four, three, four days without taking shower and you just uh, cleaning yourself with the paper, you just, they, they tell me they feel horrible, but they don't want to take the idea or they see, it, you know, they've been um, raised this way. I just, they see it as something Muslim. Just Muslim does yeah, that, it, you know? this is my what, point. What? Yeah, but this, but this is my point. Yeah, this is my point. So when I became a Muslim yeah. and I learned this thing, I was like, wow, why am I just learning this now? I thought I came. I thought I grew up in England, man. We don't know this stuff. And then the question comes down: What else don't I know? So what? I mean, this is just a very. I mean, I'm not saying make this your focus of your dawa, but make this could well yeah, be an entry into dawa because once someone yeah. realizes actually you're right about what you're saying. And then the next question would be, well, what else could you be right about? And what what else have, have I learned growing up that's also incorrect? Or yeah, there is a better way to do it? Very, so I don't very correct. Why you, why you most of them, they just, they, they, I've, I've seen the arrogance in, in them, most of them, not the majority. To be just, to be just and uh, honest, not the majority. Some, some of them, they just listen, and some of them, they understand, they actually do. And uh, alhamdulillah, my... Um, I have about three guys since I started, you know, maybe it's it's the mercy from Allah. At least three guys, they, alhamdulillah, they accept and embrace Islam just because of what they seen and living with me. Uh, but um, some of these people, they just, the arrogance, and that's why that backs me, you know, I back from telling them what's going on and why, they, because, um, the first thing they start saying and bragging me about, just, oh, I want to take shower, I want to do this. We don't have access to shower, man. You can't do that. Just go clean yourself. Uh, this is how I get to that. I, get to that. I can't, we, well, we can't take shower. It's, we can't. We are just, we don't have no, no way to, unless we go in the street and just, you know, uh, pour water and ask it. That's it. So I'll tell them, don't just wash your, yourself. And you will be, you will feel fine. You don't, you will not need shower. And when you clean yourself from that in that area, you'll be, you will last at least five, six days without showering. No problem. All right, brother Nuruddin, <laughs> let me get, let me All get right. one or two of the other brothers, inshallah, in there. But Dr. Imran, do you have any points for brother Nuruddin? No, Alhamdulillah, just to differentiate. I'm sorry. The thing. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry to bring this up. Just, uh, yeah, I was hungry. Out. I was hungry before you came on. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother Jonathan. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I witness, I witness your shahad and uh, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. I've been watching you since forever. I've been uh, alhamdulillah for your uh, uh, 
Jazakallah Praise Islam. Yes, Brother uh, Imran. Dr. Imran. Alhamdulillah. I just want to, just uh, Jazakallah for your question, just going to sort of maybe summarize what the brothers have said. So it's a differentiating between uh, Dawah and your personal work circumstances. Yes. So I've been in situations where I've worked closely with people who had some sort of issue with maybe body odor or something like this. And actually the nicest thing you can do for that individual actually is to take them to the side and say, you know what, I don't want to embarrass you, but um, this is what I'm noticing. Uh, are you aware of this? Is there a, a, what have you thought about this? And they may themselves, like you said, feel uncomfortable about and be aware of this. And they may then say, okay, how do you manage? And you can then give a, a reason for that. And then what happens from that is you can clarify my reason comes from my religion. And that would be one aspect of dealing with the personal space that isn't sort of, you know, uh, maybe directly offending them. The other thing is, is that when it comes to the dawah, you're, you have somebody with you for three or four days, then your actions during that time and maybe clarifications of what you're doing during that time may be sufficient for them to, like, you know, alhamdulillah, may Allah increase you for your the, the, the brothers you helped to come to the religion already. Um, your actions and the way you conduct yourself and your explanation of that may be sufficient for them to um, understand that this is something amazing and that maybe you want to look into it and maybe Allah can guide them that way. So it's, it's about being direct. So you can sit with some, you can take someone to one side and be very polite with them and say, you know, brother, this is what I'm noticing. I don't want to offend you in any way. Are you aware of this, etc.? And that's a nice way of them. Then they will see that sincerity, and they will say. They may say to you, "Actually, you know what? I, I notice this too, and it bothers me, but I don't know what to do about it." And then you can suggest, "Well, this is my way of doing it." Obviously, the reason I do it is because of you know this is the Sunnah of our Prophet. But you could you could easily adopt this, and this here's a bottle for you for you whenever you go to the toilet. You know, it just just do it in that way, and I think that will be uh, maybe an easy way. Inshallah, may I increase you uh, and reward you for your actions, brother. Amen. 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 Shukran. Shukran. You're muted, Abbas. Oh, sorry. I'm not doing very well on the stream today. <laughs> Subhanallah. Uh, Brother Abdullah, you're on the stream. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm not able to hear your voice. Clearly, so I'm I'm get, just gonna go with this. Uh, maybe my internet is gonna shut down suddenly. So I had a conversation with a colleague from work. He believes that Muslims are the most violent people on earth. Uh, so I told him, why would you believe that? I'm a Muslim. Do you see me a violent person? He told me, no, because you guys believe uh, about killing left and right. I told him, no. Who told you that? He told me because you guys would kill a person who wouldn't pay jizya. Uh, you know, Harubrud, I read about this. So, uh, so he raised this contention. And because of my lack of knowledge about history and tradition of Islamic history, I wasn't able to respond properly. So maybe you can educate me on this manner. Um, so, brother, the first thing I would suggest really is that um, where are you from? Are you from the States? Are you from America? No, no, no. I'm from Iraq. From Iraq, yeah. If you look at the statistics, the global statistics for the last 200 years, uh, you'd be very, very surprised, actually, that uh, Islamic uh, violence or violence done by Muslims actually is far less than many of the other religions and certainly is far less than atheism and what the atheist liberal uh, you know, drive to expand liberalism throughout the Africa and Asia and the Middle East, it has caused far more deaths uh, than, than Islam has. And in fact, even Christianity um, and Christian nations uh, in the last few centuries have killed uh, far more people than Muslims have killed. So the, the, the statistics that the, that the person is quoting or the view the person has is perhaps based on the Fox News narrative or what he's seen in the media. It's not reflective of the data. I think that's the important thing. Uh, I'll let some of the other brothers come in there, inshallah. Uh, brother was Dan, it, was, you was, was Iraq not bombed severely not so long ago? Well, exactly. By, so you think someone from Iraq would see the violence from the other side? But, sorry, go on, Dan. 
I was going to say, the main commanders in this one, uh, if you read the Quran, it's mainly defensive wars that happened on the Battle of Qadir and the Battle of uh, and the First Battle of the Muslims, the Battle of Badr. All these uh, battles, uh, if you read the Quran, you're talking about if they fight. Daniel, 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 are, are you in space? Your you microphone is not very clear. I don't have a microphone that I'm using here. I'm going to pull up flipping nine or something. I'm looking for a toilet roll. <laughs> no, it's the <laughs> terrible... <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Your your microphone is a bit a bit uh, odd. Yeah, no, it's these earphones are cheap earphones. My apologies. Um, I was just uh, mentioning about uh, the the only time you really hear about violence in the Quran uh, relating uh, to to fighting is 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 within a, the context of battle. So, like the Battle of Badr, all these uh, battles are defensive wars. So it's when the pagans came. Uh, to uh, you know, the pagan Arabs came to uh, 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 Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was drove out of uh, Mecca basically. And then he came back and then he got the idols all out and whatever. But in in Islam, in the Quran, the battles are all defensive war. So I'd ask the person that is uh, uh, you know telling you that Muslims just want to kill people left, right, and where they're getting this from, and is it, and if it's from the uh, you know the Fox News narrative. Get him to read the Quran. Invite him to read the Quran, or maybe invite him into a masjid to have a chat with a scholar about these issues. That'd be my advice, inshallah. Yeah, yeah that, that's awesome. Uh, but can I just add something? Because he added a very like a very uh, like a contention that made me a bit confused. He so he used analogy that how about a person that wouldn't accept to pay jizya? He wouldn't accept to abide by the Islamic State rules and he would stay in his house peacefully with his wife and children so would the Muslim take him and drive him out of his house and forcibly uh, take his wife and uh, well, give listen, her to a soldier? So I wasn't able to respond so can you tell me how to respond Okay, to Abdullah, Abdullah, ask this person what would happen if they didn't pay their taxes exactly. and that's exactly what I was just about to say You know, I've got to pay council tax bro, if I don't pay my council tax mate, I'm out of this house, you know, out of the area no, if you don't pay your council tax, you go into prison. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So, 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 is this guy advocating don't pay taxes? Is that what it is? He doesn't want to pay taxes. No, no, he's uh, advocating for uh, not forcing uh, the wife of that person to marry a Muslim. So, just because that person is not paying tax, doesn't mean that you should force his uh, no, wife to marry. Thing, Tell him to shut up. Okay. <sighs> Are we talking about okay. jizya here, or what, what are we talking about here? Yeah, he's linking jizya. If a person wouldn't yeah, so pay jizya, jizya. No, they would fight him. Okay. Yes. Does he believe he has to pay his taxes wherever he lives? Yeah, I, I strictly believe that. What would happen if he didn't pay his taxes? He would get punished somehow. Punished how? Well, in, in England, if you don't pay your council tax, you can be put in prison. Yes, that's correct. Oh, Okay. So you have to pay, and, and you're forced to pay your taxes. You, you, you have no choice in it. You have to pay your taxes. That's how society runs. So yeah, the jizya is a tax that women don't pay, old people don't pay, children don't pay, just men of military age pay. And, and this um, jizya um, exempts them from joining the army. And they don't have to pay zakat. Whereas Muslims, we pay zakat. So we pay our tax. So it's just a different tax. So what's the about his wife being tax. forced to do what? To marry, he, marry, he, a, marry a Muslim uh, if she's not a Muslim. He's, like, he's, yeah. dead. No, he's no, basically no. saying, yeah, he's basically saying that if he wouldn't accept to pay Jizya, <laughs> even though he has the money, so he would be treated as a warrior and he would be fought and killed and therefore his wife will be forcibly married to a Muslim. So oh, he's talking I, I didn't know how yeah. to be told. He won't be able to live there if you don't pay your taxes. As Dan just said, if you don't pay your taxes, you don't live in that house. Yeah. I don't know where he got that from. It's definitely not from many sources that I've uh, read. He's he's made that up or he's got it from somebody who just hates Islam. He's just made, completely made it up, bro. Jizya is to protect the person. And if it can't be, and if the protection can't be had for that person no more, the Jizya is give, given back to that person. So the Jizya, as Hamza rightly said, it's for people that, uh, it's, it's for people of military age. Women don't pay it, uh, you know, children don't pay it. It's for men of military age. 
to to pay for protection. And if once again, if they can't be protected, they get the jersey back. So I don't see the problem with it. And you know, I've got to pay a different tax to someone that lives in London, for instance. Does that, does that mean he's better than me and I'm better than them? You know, it's yeah, you know, it's a fair in that yeah. sense as well. Yeah, it's it does make he's better than you. North of the Watford gap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, for example, Jordan Jordan pays like hundreds of thousands of pounds a year in tax, don't he? Jordan? Yeah, that's that's rich, rich, you? Very <laughs> uh, brother Imran, brother Jordan, what, what points would you like to add to the conversation? Yeah, just to sort of um, maybe clarify something. Actually, he, if the, the, the jizya has been said as an exemption from military service. Now, if mm. you want to take part in military, so if you if you agree to when when the country is being attacked and you're going to support the the government in that defending of that country, then you don't have to pay your jizya. So it's not it's actually not true that if he doesn't pay the jizya, he will be driven out. That's actually just not not correct. Um, it's basically asking you whether or not you want to be exempt from military service, and to and to be exempt from military service, that's the fee. If you if you want to. So if you say, you actually know what, if someone attacks my home where I'm living with you guys, then I'm willing to join in with the army to fight them, then you wouldn't be actually, because you're part of the defenders, then you wouldn't be actually be paying the jizya anyway. So it's actually, a, it's an argument from, they're trying to conflate many different things. And it sounds like this person has a very bad view of Islam and actually a lot of misunderstanding about Islam anyway. Yeah. Um, so it, it might be worthwhile asking them to evidence their claims. And let's see where that takes you from there, inshallah. Mel, I make it easier for you, brother. I know that sounds like a difficult person to have a conversation with. I think I think you're right, though, Imran. It's, it's finding out where... I think all these questions, before you answer more and more of these questions, where is he getting this from? Where is he learning his Islam? Maybe get yeah. to the bottom of that. And then maybe introduce him to some decent sources um, where he can actually learn it. This is the, this is the point, isn't it? People go to anywhere other than Islamic sources for the information about Islam. They'll go elsewhere for it and... Uh, yeah, it's a shame. Jazakallah khair, brother Abdullah, for coming so much. In. Can I just add one small last point? I'm so sorry for taking your time. He basically added one last thing. He's saying that Muslims were very, very peaceful at the beginning and everything taken on the suffering. But then when they outnumbered the Qurayshi, they started their violence. So how can I respond to this? And you can remove me if you can. This is my last point. Yeah, yeah. So Again, I tell him to shut up. I don't know what he's talking about. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, yeah, brother Abdullah, to be honest, that's complete nonsense. Uh, if you study the seerah of the Prophet, uh, so the, the, Quraysh were given, the, the Quraysh were given every opportunity to, uh, to, to, uh, to live in peace and to have a treaty uh, that was supposed to be a treaty of peace, uh, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And they broke the treaty and they kept breaking the treaties. And so eventually there was no peace because these treaties were being broken uh, and the Muslims' lives were being constantly threatened. Uh, and so this is nonsense, really. And I think really what I would advise you, brother uh, uh, Abdullah, to do is if you uh, studied the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I went through uh, Sheikh um, um, Yasser Qadi's uh, uh, episodes, over 100 episodes of the Seerah. And what you actually learn from that is that the Quraysh were very treacherous in the way that they dealt with the Prophet Wasallam from the very beginning. And it was because of their lack of uh, following their own treaties and agreements uh, and, and threatening the Muslims uh, and often killing Muslims that uh, eventually there was war. Uh, and what is very telling, <coughs> very telling, is that when the conquest of Mecca took place with 10,000 Muslims, uh, it was, as the Western historians have noted, um, like Karen Armstrong, for example, that it was relatively peaceful, <coughs> excuse me, it was relatively peaceful, that there was no battle, there was no slaughter, there was no revenge. And remember, these were the people who had been killing the Muslims and fighting the Muslims for for over 20 years. And yet, the Prophet ﷺ lowered his head and with humility and with humanity, he marched into Mecca and there was no revenge that day uh, on the people that had been fighting. So I would advise you as well, Brother Abdullah, study the history of Islam because it's very important 
And even if you look at Western historians who have studied uh, uh, the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's the difference between that and what, for example, the Crusaders did uh, is chalk and cheese. Or, or that and what the, um, uh, you know, the atheists do mm-hmm. is quite frankly chalk and cheese. There's no comparison. No comparison whatsoever. So uh, you study the seerah yourself as a brother because these are very basic concepts of our history uh, and what he's doing. So is your friend from Iraq as well? Yes, he's a Shia. Iraqi Shia, yeah. My own experience of, unfortunately, of our brothers and sisters living in the Middle East and sometimes in Africa, they have a very skewed opinion about of Islam. And often this is something that has come down generationally. And sometimes it's very, very difficult to tackle this dogma, this, uh, you know, this programming. Uh, But but what you have to do is you have to combat it with evidence, brother. Now, whether the person accepts it or they don't accept it is really down to them. Uh, Do any of the other brothers want to add anything before we get the next guest on, inshallah? All right, brother. Okay. Brother Azabat. Yes, that's correct. Uh, hello, assalamu alaikum. First of all, and thank you all for, for uh, putting this together and uh, holding these uh, sessions. I actually have uh, just uh, watched, I think, one episode before and uh, not much. And I'm from Uzbekistan, uh, the uh, homeland of uh, Imam al Bukhari, actually. <laughs> So um, I'd like to ask a couple of questions regarding uh, not necessarily history or uh, like uh, some other like um, daily issues, but rather more of a conceptual thing that I have in mind. So without further, further ado, I just want to tell you that uh, I do not have like the very deep knowledge uh, of Islam, but I am a Muslim and I'm like, I was born Muslim and I kind of reconsidered my faith in my 20s, like mid 20s, and then I uh, decided and chose to remain a Muslim after like comparing different faiths and uh, confessions. So uh, whenever people ask me, like, for example, uh, what's your religion or do you have faith? Uh, I, uh, when I say the truth uh, by telling them I am an agnostic Muslim, Sometimes, you know, by adding those kind of uh, like uh, prefixes, I would say, some kind of adjectives before the word Muslim. Sometimes I get attacked by my fellow Muslims say who say that, you know, it is not, it is, you know, you can be a Muslim and that's it. You cannot be a Muslim and agnostic. You cannot be a Muslim and, uh, and for example, a secularist, for example. But uh, I am a secularist and I am an agnostic. That's a contradiction, bro. That's a contradiction, bro. The question is, how, what do you think about that? Is it like, does it make sense at all? No, it's a contradiction, that mate. You can't so be. Let, a, let me, if I can give an example, that, um, do you understand the term? And I'll use this term often, so I'll use it with you. Do you understand underwater hair dryer? <laughs> Not really. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know the words and what they mean? Underwater hair dryer. <laughs> yeah. No. Do you know what a hair dryer is? Do you know what a hair dryer is? Unless, unless they one day no, invent. As, as matter, like I'm that. asking you a question. Do you know what a hair dryer is? Yeah, I do. Okay, and do you know what underwater means? Yes, yeah, I do. Okay, so when I when I put those two words together, does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. Okay, so if you say you're a Muslim, then the definition of a Muslim is someone who testifies that nothing is worthy of worship except for Allah alone, and this is something that they have faith in and they believe. And they testify that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. Now, yeah. when you put the term agnostic in there, then what you're doing automatically is you're saying, I'm not certain about this. Yeah? Straight uh, away. Well, think, and no, then, well, because think, that's what agnostics means. This means a gnosis, a lack of knowledge. Yeah? And then the third thing is, if you turn add the word secular in there, because Allah, the, that believing that Allah is the creator and he's given you guidance via the messenger, peace be upon him, which is the shahada, then we have divine guidance and we have rules and regulations. So what mm-hmm. you're doing from and by te- and putting the term secular and you're saying actually we need to separate, we, we need to make our own rules up. Yeah. So what you're doing, so you have three words that mean opposite things when you stick them together and you're claiming to be this thing. So 
at the, I mean, it's not an, this is not an attack. This is just an explanation of the position that you've put forward. So if you feel it's an attack, then uh, you know that's your own perception. That's not the intention. The intention is to explain to you that what you're saying to me is underwater hairdryer. I know the words, but the words don't go together. It's all, we call it an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, when it comes to, let's like break it down a little bit, starting from agnostic, and, and then in the next part we'll go to the, the, the second part, which when where I actually didn't say um, secular, but rather a secularist Muslim. So this, these are two different terms, right? So, of course, I agree. Secular doesn't, uh, you know, match up with any religion or any any faith because secular means non-religious, in in short. But secularist is like it comes from secularism, right? In which, like, you don't support the like uh, you don't want to mix the pol like, or you don't want to what, base the what is the, what is the what is the difference on what is the difference in terms of practically applying. The ideology to a society. What is the difference between the term secular and secularist? Secular is, in in my opinion, in my understanding, is a very general term, which, in general, means non-religious. I cannot be non-religious, religious, right? That's why we can just put that out of the way. But when it comes to secularist or secularism, is like uh, separating religion from the state. So the the uh, government uh, law, laws or red legislation will not be based on religion in any kind of religion. That's the idea, basic yeah, idea. So, so I've already sort of gone through that section of it already. It, I'm not really going to quibble with you about what the words mean. I think it's an irrelevant uh, semantic argument. So it's, it still means the same. If God has, if we believe in the Shahada, which is what is a requirement, uh, the basic requirement for being a Muslim is to believe in the Shahada, and you believe that. Allah said guidance through the messenger, peace be upon him, for mankind, and that includes legislation, that includes legislation, then the idea that you want to reject this legislation is, again, an oxymoronic. This is an underwater hair dryer. Well, I do testify all these statements in Shahada. I can easily, you know, exercise uh, or observe all of my religious rules and stuff, Without yeah. can my can I ask, sorry to interrupt you. Can I, can I, government I, being religious, right? Am I muted or is it just ignoring me? No, no, it's ignoring you. Right. Sorry. Um, uh, you, you said you took your shah shahada's done, right? So the first part of the shahada, I don't understand how you can be agnostic and then declare that there's one God worthy of worship. It... Yeah, yeah, it, it makes no sense. It's a contradiction once again. All right. I want to clearly say that I do separate knowledge from belief. I do believe, but I don't know. Are you and are you are you a troll? Are you trolling us? No, I'm I'm, I'm very serious because that's Let me ask you a question. For my years to think about it. Do you think it's okay to drink alcohol? To drink? Yeah. Uh based on Islam, no. No, do you all. believe it's okay to drink alcohol? Uh you mean like in general like uh Do you drink alcohol? I, I, I don't. I don't. I never drank and I don't drink alcohol at all. Do you believe it's okay to drink alcohol? Mm, well, I haven't done any research on that, on that but if, if we like put religion out of the uh, outside and in uh, a way, then I'm not quite sure that it's okay or not. But in general, it uh, evidence tells us that it is in general very bad for the society. It, it you know, deliver uh, brings. Well, Negative okay. externalities. So it is. Does, does Allah say alcohol, alcohol is permissible or allowed? It is. It is not permissible. It's so why are you stuttering over your answer as to what you believe? You said you're a Muslim. No. Okay. Let me put it. Are, like, are, you, are you? Are you a uh, secularist before or Muslim? First. Are you a secularist Muslim? Is that what it is? Are you? Yeah. Are you seriously I, I, trying I to sell myself as a secularist because I do. I want the. Uh, I, I I do want the government to be separated from religion because right, I, right. So if the government says it's okay to drink alcohol, and it's okay to gamble and go to nightclubs. You think that's okay, yeah? No, for me, no. I don't think it's okay. Well, you just but said you I, want I the don't government want to force other people to not to do it. Not no, to no. Do you just things. said you think government should be able to tell the people what's right and wrong. Well, it is. You know, by theory, it is a collective decision. By theory. No, you just said you want the government to be the one that dictates to the people what's right and wrong, what's legal and what's illegal. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I don't want me or my beliefs to force other people to do the same thing or prohibit them from doing. No, but these are your beliefs. 
These are your beliefs because you want this. They, they are my beliefs, and I don't. You, you want the people. government. You want the government's morality to supersede that of Allah. Can you say again, that? Listen, mate. You know what? You've come up to us and go. Do you want to buy an underwater air dryer, mate? And you think we're so dumb that we're going to buy it? No, I'm uh, not going to convince you. I'm just trying to get you. Just, this one. was a good idea. Just, what, what, what was it possessed in your mind? You thought this would be a good idea to come on and tell people, I'm not really sure. I believe that man should make their own laws. And I believe Allah is the only one worthy of worship. And this kind of makes sense. How does that make sense in your brain? It just makes a lot of sense to me. It because makes no sense. It doesn't make yeah, it make, first of all, to be a Muslim, I believe in the entirety of the Quran. And in the Quran, in the sixth ayah of the Quran, it says, guide us to the straight path. The straight path of who? But Allah, as, as the Rajal, not the secular laws, that are, these man-made laws. The only straight path is the one that Allah, as the Rajal, is set with the Quran and the Sunnah. To say that you're a Muslim and a secular, I'll say it for the fifth, sixth time now, it's a contradiction in terms. It's like saying, it's like, yeah, I, I'll just use uh, Brother Imran's uh, example of an underwater hairdryer. This map makes no sense. It's a contradiction. It's worse than that, Daniel. He's come to sell yeah. us an underwater hairdryer. Yeah, no, I, you, you're gonna well, get uh, an uh, bro, doing that, bro. brother, Az uh, brother Azamat. If I can ask, I'm you insulted by this. Do you, I'm insulted by this. I'm trying to, you know, like, you. why is he still here? My, my, <laughs> what, ha what I have in mind, I don't want you to, I don't want you to follow what I believe, right? Or what I think. I'm not telling you thinking the, the wrong way. I totally respect and I'm, and try my best to understand your position. Mm -hmm. And but that doesn't mean that I'm trying to impose my ideas okay. on you, right? Should we get to the reason why he came on? Maybe he's got a question no, or no, 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 just one second, guys. Just one second, guys. But brother, brother Azamat, do you believe that the best person to judge what is good or bad is Allah? Yes. Do you believe that the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, who came with the teachings given to him by Allah, would know what is best for us and what is bad for yes. us? So do you believe that anything that contradicts that has to be wrong? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Well, there we go. So what, now, what, what I, so I what, want to so, add one more point to what you just said. Just, just one second, Brother Azamat. So therefore, whatever Allah and the Prophet wasallam says to do is correct, is good, is lawful, it is proper. Whatever yeah. mankind, humankind, whatever you or I or anybody else for that matter comes with that contradicts that teaching, it logically, rationally, therefore has to be wrong. Has to be wrong. It has to be wrong. Yes? Yeah. So for us as Muslims, we're told... Enter into the deen, into the religion of Islam completely. We can't, a believer can't enter on certain matters and reject other matters. We have to enter into this deen completely because only then have we truly submitted to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever, brother, your heart or my heart tells me if it contradicts that from what Allah has given us or what the Prophet ﷺ has given us, no matter how strongly I might feel about it, I'm wrong. Okay. If inshallah you operate this principle and this rule, alhamdulillah, all of the confusions will go inshallah. I'll let Brother yeah. Imran just quickly come in there before we get the next guest on. Uh, Hazim, I just want to ask you a question. Did you have a yeah. Did you have a question, or do you, were you just coming on to tell us that what you believe? I, I already asked the question. They said, uh, and maybe uh, the formulation could be a bit different. My question was, uh, to what do you think or what do you believe? Uh, can a Muslim be agnostic and can a Muslim be secularist? That was my question. No, we've already, I think we've already explained that these are contradictions in terms. Yeah. But not the agnostic um, one, but mostly the secularist one. And I, I, I think your what you explained no, to me the is very so in the agnosticism, sense. Uh, brother, but, the agnosticism well. and the secularism both are contradiction in terms when applied with the term Muslim. So I, I don't want to have any ambiguity about our position. What we're saying to you is, the words you are putting together in that sentence don't make sense when they go together. So can I can I speak more about maybe about agnosticism? We haven't really discussed it yet. 
Um, no, it should be, it should be a quick one, I think. Uh, no. brother, brother, if you meant if you say it very quickly, because the word agnostic is basically it simply means mm. that you it simply means that you're unsure. You don't know whether God exists or he doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But so, the, 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 but the first testimony, the testimony of faith is la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There is none worthy of worship except Allah, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Jesus, the, uh, Allah, the God of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, there is none worthy of worship except for Allah, and that Muhammad is his messenger. If I don't believe that, then I'm not a Muslim, brother. So if you say just to, just to clarify that a bit further, it's it's called a testimony of faith because you are. You are you are proclaiming this. You are bearing witness to this truth. Do you understand? Yeah. So you 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 don't just say uh, words without meaning. You are bearing witness to the truth and the veracity of the statement that's coming out. So this is an outward manifestation of the of the belief inside your heart, and this is the whole thing. Yeah, so, I totally agree. But can I speak my mind a little bit more? As I said, I clearly said like distinguish between the knowledge and the belief. Uh, and in in your previous uh, like how, session, how do you do that? So, some of you, some of you like already. So, I don't remember. Maybe it was Brother Hamza or someone else. <laughs> I don't really remember. But you guys said that uh, I don't have that empirical, scientific, like physical knowledge of whether God exists or not. But at the same time, I am completely, like, extremely uh, convinced. You use the word convinced that God exists. So that's how I... Well, can I ask you a question, bro? Are exists. you convinced that God exists? I, I, am, I believe extremely God exists, but that doesn't yeah. mean I know that, as a matter of fact, you know, as uh, but I don't have that scientific empirical evidence of God Yeah, exists. you're making a... Brother, a brother, Azam, brother Azam, you're, making a, you're making a basic mistake here in terms of knowledge. You're, you're saying, you, you seem to be saying that the only thing that I can know is what science establishes, what I have empirical evidence for. Now, that is a basic error in epistemology, in knowing what you know. And Brother Hamza does this very, very simply. He goes through knowledge and belief. Um, so, Brother, you want to go through that with him? And I just want to clarify that what the Brother Hamza is doing here is clarifying for you that you can believe something and know it uh, without evidence even. Brother Hamza, I'll leave it to you, inshallah. Yeah, when well, I say without evidence, I mean, there is different types of evidences. But the point here is this. If you're going to say everything requires empirical evidence, oh, my camera's going to mess up. If you, if, if you say everything's going to require empirical evidence, well, this is not how we go through our lives. This is not what human beings do. We believe things to be true based upon reason and, and as to reasons why. So the word belief also means accept, convince, trust, yeah, or convict. So when you accept something to be true, it's because you've heard a proposition. So if someone says to you such and such a thing and you uh, believe that thing or accept that thing to be true, it's because there'll be underlying reasons for that position. So, for example, this is why we believe our mother's our mother and our father's our father, not because we've got empirical evidence for it. It's the fact that we trust their, their word for it. We trust their testimony and characteristics of the parents. And even if you were to have a DNA test, you're still trusting the testimony of a doctor because you yourself can't interpret the results. You yeah, don't yeah. have this empirical evidence. So so to, to, to try to claim the only root of knowledge is empirical evidence is incorrect. That's not how we operate in this world. And so it, it seems like a, a special pleading when it comes to the existence of a creator. All of a sudden, no, you're demanding a, um, a, a uh, what's the word, a criterion that you don't use for anything else. I agree. Do, do you get me? And, and like I say, testimony is very important. It's, it's acceptable as proof. If we don't accept testimony as evidence and proof, we wouldn't even know what's happened in history. We wouldn't have an idea of the history of the Egyptians and Caesar and all, all the Greeks and all this kind of stuff without testimony. Because we weren't there. We were relying on somebody else telling us this thing happened. Do you understand? So yeah, this is this is this is so it's epistemology. It's, it's understanding how, how you understand what knowledge is. Yeah, do, do you get me? Yeah. So you don't need empirical evidence to demonstrate God exists. So I'll I'll make it clear. I believe a creator exists because I don't believe the universe could exist yeah. without a creator. Standard. I also do. Yeah, I believe all the sciences, biology, chemistry, and physics all point to an intelligent agency behind creation. 
So and so I, I can't, I, I cannot come to the conclusion this this whole universe could exist. So when, when an atheist comes to me now, prove your God, I'll say the universe. There you go. There's my evidence. If you want to refute my evidence, refute it. Do you get me? So, so yeah, this yeah. is the position. So going back to the original point about agnostic Muslim, it's an oxymoron. You cannot say, I'm not sure whether God exists. I bear witness the only one worthy of worship is Allah. What are you talking about? You don't even know if God exists. Do you not understand that contradiction? Yeah. I think I kind of... Um, sure God exists, that how makes sense to me. Testify to worship him. Yeah. Th this where we're different. Actually, that's what I see our differences. It doesn't make sense to you, but it's, it does... No, it doesn't make, make sense to anybody. I, no, I think it's, as a man. It's like I'm not going to again to you. Just as an under, under, underwater hairdryer and a square triangle doesn't make sense to anybody, an agnostic Muslim doesn't make this sense in the same category. The law of That's contradiction. It's the, the law of non contradiction. There we go. Uh, you know, one. So it's one, illogical. This, it's irrational. Listen, listen, Hazmat. It's illogical. It's irrational. It's unreasonable. Mm -hmm. And if you want to continue believing this is true, you're nothing more than delusional. According to you. According no, no. to you. Thank according you. to I the agree. laws of logic. According to you. Okay. According to, you, according to logic. Uh, According to logic, not me. I don't make the laws of logic. Now, if you want to, if you want to say something illogical, it's like I'm talking to a madman. So, brother, uh, you've got no you to your you going to say something. What were you going to say? So, yeah, I, I, I wanted to just say a few things as a matter, just a couple of lines. Because I, I think, firstly, I'll apologise for calling you a troll after listening to what you're saying. I don't think you're trolling. I kind of yeah. feel like you're, you're, you're a really good example because I think you are like a. How old are you, by the way? If you don't mind me asking. I'm like, what? How old are you? If you don't mind me I'm, I'm 30. You're 30? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was thinking, thinking you remind me of a lot of the youth where you're, you're, everything you're defining yourself with is by the Western sort of new atheist. Your, your use of the word agnostic is purely from the new atheist stuff. The way you the way you use your secularist, I understood what you said about the secularist. You're basically saying that you're happy to still live separately. You know, you split the state into religion and non-religious. The government, which is essentially how we live now, the government make our laws. Yeah. But you seem yeah. to also be saying that the, the Muslims can still have their, their religion. So you're basically, you're kind of, your whole brain is is conditioned to kind of a Western atheistic narrative, but you're holding on to your Islam. It's like you've held on to it. And I think after listening to you, I, 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 I quite respect how you've managed to still hold on to it. And I kind of, I don't want to leave you this stream you know, obviously, if you come onto a Muslim stream and say agnostic Muslim, that's like saying fire in it. <laughs> it's going to trigger people. Fire in the but, water. But I, I honestly, I honestly, brother, I feel like your your Islam is still there. You're hanging on to it. You still believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. You do seem to believe in God. It's just that it's not scientifically proven. All that. Just throw all that new atheist nonsense away, man, and and embrace your religion because you it's still there. You, you I, I still see you as a Muslim despite all the nonsense that you've said and i apologize for it that is some of it is nonsense and it seems to me i think this is a good example because i've heard a lot of people at speakers corner speak like you you hear young people use these scientific terms and and, and they're stri they're trying to be muslim but they they can't quite get past that a new atheist sort of terminology uh, and that's my take on you and, I, and I, like i said may allah guide you and i hope wow. you i hope you keep on so can not. I can I leave the studio by uh, by like uh, pointing out uh, the the reasoning behind like very very quickly the reasoning behind why I think uh, agnostic Muslim uh, uh, is not a uh, like underwater hair dryer and very quickly this is because it depends on the definition of your maybe it could be uh, there are not one single definition of an of, of agnosticism right. In, in one more specific, not general, but more specific definitions, one of the definitions is that, uh, you know, by saying I'm an agnostic, you mean I don't know. Bro, 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 bro. do you pray? 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 I do pray, but honestly, not regularly. Get on your prayers, man. You've done your shahada. Take your prayer. Start doing your you, prayers. You're not All listening this to nonsense. me. I, I know. I, you know I, I, you know, I'm not listening. making sense. You know what you're saying to us, other man. I'm going to give you a football yet. analogy because I know that uh, Jordan likes football. What you're basically saying to us? <laughs> I'm not sure if Chelsea Football Club exists, but they're my favorite team. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make any sense? 
I think let me explain. I mean, as a, I do not know. As a, as a, as a, as a, as a something. As a, okay, I don't know. Uh, if you know what you said, he was talking about. No, no, no. One second, Hamza. Just one second, everyone. Azamat, make your point, please, and then okay. inshallah, Tala, we will uh, we will tackle your point. But if you could be brief and make your point, and then we okay. will inshallah discuss the point. Okay. But I want to tackle this point he made earlier. But let him finish it because he's trying to make I his point as to why he thinks it's the right thing to do. So let him just make his point, and then we can we can we can talk <laughs> to him inshallah. So make make your point yeah. quickly, brother okay. Azamat. Just want to uh, make sure that it is as clear as possible and as detailed as possible. And okay, when it comes to agnosticism, uh, and uh, of course, if you define it uh, just like you did, I completely agree with you all. In agnostic Muslim doesn't make sense at all, according to that definition, more broader definition. But there is many definitions, like more than one. And one very specific one is that when you say I'm an agnostic, you mean that. Uh, it is not possible to know something, to know something with 100% certainty. That's one of the definitions, right? And I just hold into this definition. And that's why I was telling you guys that it is somehow, it could be possible to be an agnostic uh, believer or agnostic Muslim in this case. So uh, we, none of us knows, none of us here knows, not police, but knows that God exists uh, with 100% certainty, right? And nothing in science is 100% uh, certain, right? So we are to some extent agnostics. That's my understanding. I'm not telling that you should think so. I just my way of thinking and believing. So I do have very strong belief in God. And at the same time, I do understand for myself that, you know, knowing anything with 100% certainty is impossible so like, based on these arguments i like think to myself that it is possible to be to be an agnostic muslim based on this very specific definition okay bro uh bro uh, one second just one second dan just one second uh Azama, thank you for making your point i'd like to offer it to dr imran first if that's okay mm -hmm. guys because I, it's a sensitive subject i don't want it to get out of hand and I want it to. I want something, inshallah, constructive to come out of this, inshallah. So, so, uh, so, Doctor Imran, could you please start with the answer, inshallah? Yeah. So, what you're doing is there's two things, just sort of um, fundamentally, what you're doing. So, one thing is is that you're you're bringing this uh, a strange definition of agnosticism that's unusual. So, there's atheism, and there's theism. So, theism is the proposition that God exists. Atheism is the opposite of that. It's actually the proposition that God does not exist. And there's agnosticism in the middle, which we say that uh, we're not certain. Okay, now you've said you've, and then what you said, what you linked your certainty to was scientific data. Yeah. Now well, there's a problem. Now I'll ask you a very straightforward question. This is turned uh, apart from Dow Clinic has turned into something else, but just to ask you a very specific question: um, Is God? And is there any natural means to assess the supernatural? No. Okay. Definitely not. That's because right. Science deals so, with nature. Yeah. So that there is a problem now, and even now, your approach. You've said that my tool I'm going to use to ascertain whether I know something or not is this tool, and this tool is a hairdryer, and you want to use the tool underwater because you think you can dry your hair underwater. It's the wrong tool. What you what you need is to get out of the water of science, and then you can use your hairdryer because it will work. So a non, if something is outside of uh, the natural world, i.e. the supernatural, the creator, etc., you're not able to do uh, scientific experiments which only deal with the natural world. The basic underlying assumption in science is that there are no non-natural explanations. If you use science, then you cannot determine anything, not even something, anything about the the uh, uh, the supernatural. Now, I'm, I'm not now. So now, what? Why are you? The question I'm asking you is, why have you? Why have you set yourself a task that is impossible, and made that impossible task your criteria for believing something to be true or not? Well, different people have different criteria, right? So I, I just I just chose this definition, like, and you can choose your definition. And I think majority of the Muslims... Brother, brother, it doesn't work on language. Uh, sorry, brother, to interrupt you. I know you're... What I'm saying to you is that language is something we have in common. 
when we use words to each with each other, the words have to have a meaning that we agree upon. If you, if I say um, I'm, the term uh, agnostic means that I like to go fishing, this is how I define the term agnostic. You're going to say, why are you doing that? That doesn't make sense. Now, this is what you're doing. You're taking the term agnostic and you're applying it in a way that does not make sense in terms of language and the way we use language. We don't say agnosticism means that it's just a little bit of uncertainty or there's uncertainty. Mm. What you're saying is you either... You, sorry, go on, please. Uh, everyone would be agnostic then, wouldn't they? You'd have like, every, every atheist would be agnostic, every Absolutely. Jew would be agnostic. So yeah. you may as well drop the definition. Sorry, man. So let me ask you another question. I now, agree. Related, I agree. Related this question. Are, are that you, is so, yeah. Sorry, I just want to ask you a question. Do you believe that minds aside from your... Do you believe your mind exists? Mm. I'm going to do that. You said believe, right? You said, do you believe? Do you I do believe, believe that your mind exists? Yes, I do believe so. What, uh, are you certain? Um, and you, you better ask, are you 100% certain? I would say I'm, no. I'm asking you if you're certain that your mind exists. He said no. He said no. I, I don't. I'm not 100% certain. Okay. Do you believe other minds exist? I, I do believe. Are you certain? I'm not 100% certain. Do you think you're talking to somebody now? I do believe. Are you certain? Not hundred percent certain. But okay, so this, so now you see, brother Azma, as, 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 you see where you're, you see where this line of reasoning leads you into. It leads you into absurdity. You are talking to a figment of your imagination if your imagination exists. Yeah. So what I, I agree with what brother yeah. Jordan is saying. I agree with what your brother Jordan is saying to you. You're alhamdulillah, you're a nice guy. May Allah guide you, inshallah. Don't get confused between this idea of belief and knowledge and separating them out. As Brother Hamza said, uh, a, a belief can be true without empirical evidence. We believe, I believe my mother is my mother. Have I done a DNA test? No. Absolutely. You, so we, can we apply the standard of... Apply the, sorry, no, just my one sentence. Apply the standards of evidence that you use in your life to other things in the world. Can Don't make a special standard when it comes to this particular topic. Yeah, yeah I, I made made my proposition, my argument, and the keyword was keyword 100% certainty. So certainty should be measured in, in, in any kind of way. Like, so you didn't really relate in your arguments, relate to that part by telling like 100% certainty, 70% certainty, 80% certainty. That's one of the key parts of science and the yeah, way we understand. I, I, what I, did, as 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 I did something more deep than that. What I, said, what I said to you is much deeper than that. I said to you, science is not the tool to use in this discussion. And that's the much deeper point that I'm making to you, because you said to me that you cannot use a, a natural mechanistic uh, worldview to investigate a supernatural being. It I doesn't agree. make sense. Yeah, okay, so that's then... That's why I'm agnostic. Like, no, you can't... That no, 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 not at all, not that at all. That is the reason why no, I'm no, agnostic. No, but that doesn't make sense, that. brother. That doesn't make sense. You're so agnostic. Go on, go on, uh, Hamza, you can go for Brother Hamza, uh, you're agnostic. So when you say agnosticism, is that a, a statement of certainty or uncertainty? Uh, agnostic, by agnostic, I mean, it's like it's not uh, possible to know. Okay. Why, so is, why, it, why, is, it a is it a certainty statement or an uncertainty statement? What do you mean by that? Like, okay. Are you certain that you're is agnostic? It, it not, uh, no, 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 no. When you say I'm agnostic, that means you, you can't be 100% certain God exists, yes? Yes, by okay. knowledge. Okay. And la ilaha illallah, what does that mean? Is that, is that a statement of certainty or uncertainty? Da, da, what level of certainty, certainty is that? La ilaha illallah. Certainty. What statement of certainty? What level? Um, like, you know, I say I believe there's no God but Allah. And, uh, no, I testify. In my, in my case, it is... You no, say, no, 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 no. As a man. It is la 99% in my case. 99.9%. La ilaha illallah means there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. So you cannot say, I'm not that certain if Allah exists, but there's nothing worthy of worship but Allah. It, it, it doesn't make no sense. No matter how you try to play with the word agnosticism, it doesn't make sense to say la ilaha illallah is a statement of certainty. Agnosticism is a state is a statement of uncertainty. And you cannot say you're uncertain about a certainty. 
It's just nonsense, and, and I'm done on it. As Peter me, Jones would say, I'm out. Uh, very brother, clear, Azimut, brother Azimut, before you come yeah. back in there, brother Azimut, sorry, before you come back in there, uh, Dan, I'd like you to briefly make your point, and then if Jordan wishes to make another point, and then we'll see if we can get one of the other guests on, because obviously we've, I think we've, we've uh, had quite a long discussion on this. Uh, brother Dan, would you like to make a point to brother Azimut? Well, I was going to ask a question. Are you certain that you've got a great, 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 great grandma? Grandma? Have you? Are you? Are you certain that you have a great, 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 great grandma? I am certain. And why? There's not the difference between certain and uncertain, but to what extent? I'm asking you a question. Are you certain, yes or no, that you have a great, 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 great grandma? 99% yes. Wow. 99? Well, why are you 99%? Yeah, yeah. Why, what's the 1%? Point. What's Sorry, sorry, Dan. What's the 1%? You didn't yeah. have a great, 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 great grandmother. And you just yeah, come that, that, out there. We're all living in an illusion. Well, come on. What? <laughs> uh, you, you just said... Are you certain? Yes or no? Illusion. That's why there's no 100% certainty. The question is dichotomous. It's a dichotomous question, my friend. It's either yes or no. There's no, there's no, there's no in between. There's no grey area. It's a black and white question. It's yes or no. Are you certain I, you have that a? That was the key uh, part of my argument. It's not yes or no. It's about. It is a yes or no. It's, it's you either do or you don't, bro. That's the argument. You either do or you don't. Uh, okay, He's brother Dan. No brother Dan, what well, I'd like to do, brother Jordan, would you like to make another point before I come in there? I was going to, but I'm not even sure as Azamat's there, so I can't. I can't. Yeah, make it. Uh, brother Imran, do you want to make another point before I just make a small point? Uh, yeah, so just sort of just summing up a, a little bit, brother Azamat. So the fundamental, just just want to lay out the things because the point I was making in our previous exchange was the position you're holding leads to absurdities, such as denying even that you yourself that you exist. Yeah. No. It's just uh, one zero zero. No, no, uh, brother Asma, let me finish my sentence because you're jumping in right, very defensively. Right. I'm not attacking you. I'm explaining to you what the, from my perspective, what the issues are. Yeah. Sorry. So as I said to you before, in a in a summarized <laughs> way, uh, theism is a proposition that God exists. Atheism is a proposition that God does exist. An agnostic, if you look at any philosophical definition, is they're uncertain whether God exists or not. There is none of this sort of. Um, you know, this this other type of definition that you're bringing philosophically. If you want to bring a lay definition and you say, this is my own personal definition, then really what you're doing is you're saying that I, you know, you, you're you're sort of on your own in the world. Now, what, the other thing is that it lead what your position leads to, because what you what do you require? What you, you say that I require scientific empirical evidence for any certainty. But actually, you don't even know if your own mind exists. Yeah, mm. you're not certain about this. You don't, even know if other, you don't even know if other minds exist. Yeah, Good You don't point. even know if you're actually having a conversation with a person at so the moment. So you can never be certain, ever. So everything that you have, is, is you're in a state of uncertainty. So you're not, ag not agnostic about religion. or You are agnostic about everything. We call this solipsism. You're, you're in a position of hyper-skepticism where you are not even certain about anything, even, even that I think, therefore I am. You're not even certain that this is actually... The case because there's no empirical scientific evidence for the statement. There's no evidence for the fact that you 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 can produce to evidence that you exist. Now, what 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 am I trying to say by this? I'm trying to say to you is that the position you're holding, it's untenable because everything around you is is you know non-existent. Even you are. No. Forget everything. Everything around you is non-existent. No, because you're not because you're not certain. Ninety-nine percent certainty. With ninety-nine. No, no. percent Certainty. Of, of, of what? 90%. Of what? Of their existence. Uh, uh, do, uh, do you exist, uh, Asma? Yeah, I do believe uh, even 99.9% certainty. Who said that? Who said that? So uh, are you saying that are you saying that there's a possibility? Is there a possibility that you may not exist, Asma? Can you say it again, please? Is there a possibility that you may not exist? Yes. Very, okay. very, 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 very low. So this is the problem now. This is the position that you find yourself in, as a matter. So this is why no one takes the position that you're saying in any seriousness, mm. because although it may make sense in your head somewhere, if your head exists, the the reality is that it doesn't make sense in the real world, which we do believe exists. We believe it without empirical evidence, because science makes an assumption of what that you have rational faculties. It makes an assumption of what that you have consciousness that is able to, to use its senses to assess the real world. It makes assumption of what. 
uh, mathematical principles. It makes assumption of what that the universe is is uniform and intelligible. These are all unproved assumptions within the underpin science that you you have no empirical data for. So yes, even everything that you're talking about, even the evidence, like this is my evidence, is is sort of uh, based upon things that you can't prove empirically. Yeah. So it's a self-defeating argument, my brother. And mm. I wish you all the best in, in what you're doing. Feel free to email us because we're happy to con yeah. continue with the discussions. Uh, before we let but, Brother Azamat go, do, uh, Brother, Hamza, have, uh, wanna, uh, Brother Hamza, do you want to add anything at the end? You're, you're muted, Brother Hamza. Let me just ask one question quickly. You keep saying 99%, 99% to get, validate yourself. Why is it more than 50-50? What is it you're using as a uh, measure so you can increase the odds? The thing is that I just specifically try to you know focus on 99% in order to deliver my core idea to you. It can be 80%. It can be 80 <laughs> no, no, 50 why is it not 50-50? Because, because before you were telling me that, do you certain, are you certain or not certain? That was your question mostly. And I was telling you, it's not about yes or no. It's, no, it's no, but why is it not 50-50? I'm That's trying to understand the reason. method you're using to say 99% and not 50-50. Because, it's more, because it's if, if you're not sure, look, if you're uncertain, you're uncertain. Okay, so it could be and it couldn't be. 50-50. I don't understand how you're getting it to 99.9%. .9%. What, what mechanism are you using? You know, there are there are like two different things I would say. The like scientifically proven, peer-reviewed conclusions and like personal things. Okay, like, so what know, scientific that, that proof, proof is that? that? Okay. That personal so what's the scientific that? proof that you have a mind? For what? Well, you just said you use scientific proof to edge your bet. So I'm saying you're a 50-50 shot. You're certain it could be, couldn't be. Yeah, fine. All right. And you're saying you use scientific uh, evidence to increase the odds towards certainty. Okay. What scientific scientific evidence do you use to determine you have a mind? Uh, again, I said that was my personal certainty, not scientific. No, no, right. So I'm trying to understand how you get past 50-50. Because for me, you're a 50-50 shot, mate. You just say 99 to sound like you're not crazy. But you you are crazy and it is 50 50 because you are uncertain and you've got no way of determining the things you're uncertain about you've got no way of proving so you've got to be 50 50 mate it either uh, is or it isn't no you, you ain't got a mechanism the, so you're, you're fooling yourself by trying to say 99 as if i really do believe it but it's just a slight doubt no it's 50 50 mate that's it. Okay. That smile says it all. I have mate. nothing against you. I have nothing against you. If you say no, that you're 50 to 50, it's okay. But I'm telling you that from my side, I'm 99% certain, like 99 point, like million nine yeah, times, yeah, 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 yeah. like person sure God exists, you know, my, by scientifically. I've already got underwear, underwater I don't want to buy anymore. I'm 100% convinced God exists. Bro brother, but my, my knowledge certainty is like 99%. Yeah, yes, Brother yes. Azamat, let me just, inshallah, give you some brotherly advice, okay? This is not criticism. This is not to judge you. Just a brotherly advice. Yeah. In life, we don't believe and we don't treat things in absolutes anyway. I agree. Right. So we literally govern the, our whole life on balance of probability. Yeah. Now so, you're coming. So when I cross the road... If I feel that the probability is maybe, let's say, 50-50 that I might be run over by these two trucks, I probably won't cross the road. But if I'm 99.9% .9 sure that, you know what, they're quite far away, I think I can make it across, I'll cross the road, right? Yes? Yes, true. What I wouldn't do, Brother Azmut, is I wouldn't stand there and wait for the 100% safety before I cross the road. It never happens. Because it never happens, right? So therefore, Brother Azamat, what I would suggest to you, don't worry about the 0.000001%. When you arrive at a situation where you are overwhelmingly convinced of a reality, mm. alhamdulillah, accept it. Otherwise, if you operate a strategy of ultra skepticism, then as Imran has quite beautifully, mashallah, elaborated and, and explained that you completely lose the anchor of reality. Hmm. 
Okay. Looks like I'm very similar to you, but I just call myself agnostic. No, no, but brother, let me just please let me just finish. Let me just, let, let me just finish my point, brother Azamat. Right now, Allah does not expect us to have perfection in our belief and in our practice. So we, we are going to fall short, brother. If our iman was a hundred percent of Allah and of the last day and Jahannam, we would never get off the prayer mat. We would never speak a lie. We would never do anything wrong because we would be completely 100% convinced of that reality. Yes. But we deal in balance of probability. We look at the evidence of the Quran. We look at the evidence of the Hadith. We put that all together and we are overwhelmingly convinced that this is the reality. So Alhamdulillah, we accept it and we strive and we do our best. We will never reach 100%. So don't worry about the 100%. Just strive and do your best. Right. Learn the religion and just do your best and strive. And that's all Allah expects from you. Allah does not expect you to have 100% on anything. Because if Allah wanted you to have 100% on everything, he would have made you perfect. And only Allah is perfect. Everything else is imperfect. Um. Yes. Can we so one last analogy? So one yeah, just before analogy. you come in, Hamza, inshallah. So brother, just just please don't worry about this ultra skepticism, ultra argument. The other thing is that brother brother Imran alluded to something very very important. We can't use words and place meaning on them as we wish, because no, we do. Because if I said to you, I have a square triangle, you would say to me, what are you talking about? Yes? You can't have a, a, a contradictory term that I choose to define in a different way to somehow make it acceptable. It's not, it doesn't work. Language does not work like that. So I would humbly say to you, brother, this is not an attack. This is not a thing. You know, we all make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. Okay. Uh, but I would hope that you would, inshallah, at least reflect upon the fact that agnostic Muslim are two contradictory terms. They are, they are, they are, they are explicitly opposites and they can't be used in any way whatsoever to have any meaningful definition or reality. So I would suggest, you know, you can say, you can say that I can't say that I'm 100% convinced of the reality of Islam, but I am convinced enough to know that this is the reality and inshallah I will act upon it. This is a good ad advice, brother, to be honest. Yeah. yeah, thank you for your advice. And that's actually how I, you know, you might not agree, but that's how I decide, uh, define this very, at least uh, some level of agnosticism in me. All right. That's one, one, thing, one thing before before Hamza, you come in, brother. Just explain. Brother mm -hmm. Azamat, the other thing is this: whenever we use language, we use language in order to 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 provide meaning and clarity to also those who hear us and are conversing with us. So just because I feel that I want to define it in this way, logically and rationally rationally knowing that if i use those terms in a public setting people will not understand me it's better not to use that term does that make sense brother yeah so i I'd, I'd rather I'd, in, if i t like take your advice then i would rather not use the word agnosticism to that's, that's a good idea brother but, but i can explain the you know, what's the underlying underpinnings? Like, I'm 100% convinced God exists, but I uh, have very little evidence that he exists. Like, I don't know, maybe uh, I have that knowledge at the level of 40 or 50% certainty because we don't have any empirical evidence. That's a truth. Why do you believe God exists? So, some people do not call this agnosticism like you, but I would call it agnosticism. But no, I but wouldn't tell it to what, anyone. What you've, just said, yeah. you've just said you believe 100% God exists. Can, Why? I say again? Can you say it again? You believe 100% God exists. Yes. Why? Um, because with that God, the entire universe or anything wouldn't make sense to me. 
So you've just bucked up now, bro, because you just said a minute ago. So what you're saying is the universe, well, the universe oh, no, existed over there? Again. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Anyway, why would you say last analogy? Last analogy, Azamat. To me, without Azamat. God in it. Azamat, last analogy. Very simple. If I said to you, I'm a Hindu Muslim, what would you say? <laughs> I, to be honest, I don't really know what Hindu... Uh, Hindus believe, believe in God. Many different God. God. One second, uh, Dan, Dan. Uh, what, um, believe in many gods, believe in uh, all these crazy stories about the monkey army and stuff. Basically, completely contrary to what Islam teaches. It is a, if, if it's real contradiction, then it would be contradict, contradiction between... I mean, what you said wouldn't make sense in that case. Right. So that's what we're saying to you when you say agnostic Muslim. All right. That's it. But there's no contradiction for me. No, but there is a contradiction. That's the point. For you. Thank you. I agree. For okay. As no, no, no. We for thank you very much for um, yeah. telling us about <sighs> your personal definition of a word which no one else uh, in the world would agree with. There are um, many we, people agree. we appreciate, we appreciate your position. We, we appreciate your position. And what I would suggest is um, just as Have you leave... Good for him. Yeah, just as you lead your life in a way that you make decisions and you act and you don't just sit there thinking you're not certain, therefore you're not going to do anything, you should do with the, the same for this. And I would read a little bit more about epistemology, i.e. How we, how we know what we know. And what you'll realize is that believing that science is the only way to have certainty is something called scientism and actually is a logical fallacy. Um, but, you know, I've done a video on this in Urdu. Maybe I need to do this in English as well. Um, but it's important that you realize that what you're what you're proposing is something called scientism. That's very important. I, to look I'm against that. scientism. Sure. So if science is not the only way to have knowledge, then your uh, exactly. whole argument is is the I whole agree. argument is uh, is underlined is is uh, undercut. So no. I wish you all the best, as Azamat. You, yeah. you, I wish you all the best. You take care. Uh, please Likewise. contact us again. Email us, and then we can yeah. take it from there. Okay. Bro, start your prayers, you inshallah. Man, this, Lord Lord. Thumbs up, brother Abbas, brother Imran, everyone. Thanks so much. What about Thanks, me? I exist. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> or do you? <laughs> All the others. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, all right. Salam alaikum. Sorry. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was like, yeah. Me had a guy him. It was a bit like we were playing, and we peeing in the wind. But, um, but it's yeah, a shame was, because we, we a lot of people actually have um, they've fallen <laughs> foul of these ideas, and uh, they they're confused. Their thinking has become really confused, um, and it's a shame to see the brother struggling. He sounds like a nice guy. I just yeah. think he's just got some of his basic understanding in the wrong place. Yeah. Um, Mel got it said exactly right. Is that he's put himself in a position where he's in a where he, nothing can be real anymore. So he's stuffed, isn't he? He's never going to cross the road. He's never going to. Yeah. In fact, he's not talking to you. He's just uh, talking to himself, or if, if he exists. <laughs> um, so uh, we've got uh, Cyclone. Yeah, brother Cyclone. I'm sorry, but your internet is just not going to get through. I don't think. I think there so, might be a cyclone blowing through that region. My my apologies. Uh, who who's next? Sorry, waiting. Do we know? Um, should we? Should I we get... um, Yilmaz was there. Been a while. But... Yilmaz, okay, uh, brother Yilmaz. Salam alaikum, Sheikh. You can hear me. Wa alaikum assalam, no. brother. There's no Sheikh here. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe this time, this... Have, maybe you'll only find a milkshake. But it's... Milkshake, brother. Milkshake. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that. Oh yeah, I forgot that last time to say salam alaikum. So I say salam alaikum again. And, uh, today, today I have another question. Another uh, question that I came through. I was watching one sheikh uh, speaking on uh, last days of Qiyam. And then I saw this sheikh saying that uh, one of the signs that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said is that the Kaaba will, our, uh, the Kaaba will break and it will become in stones. And uh, the hadith says they will be from Habasha. And then the sheikh interpreted this one, they will be from Ethiopia. And then he said this, uh, he, he interpreted that Ethiopia, Ethiopia, the whole nation, he said, the Ethiopians are wild people. 
I became, I swear, I broke a fuse. I was going to go with my head to the wall. And when he said that. Uh, and Brother then, Yilmaz, Brother Yilmaz mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. issue here is it's very difficult for us to comment on what one individual has said. Mm-hmm. And uh, was there a particular question that you wanted to ask us about dawah yes, how and how, do, to, how to give dawah? Uh, because yes, how to, it, it, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. sorry. How to do dawah to a person that does dawah? He's a sheikh. He's sitting in the middle of the thing and talking to people and saying Ethiopian dawah. And his reason is that the yeah, maids yeah. in in yeah. Saudi are are beating the thing. They should this like the maids in Saudi are they beat them, they rape them uh, and brother, stuff like that Yilmaz, because brother, brother Yilmaz the, the, the question the issue here is this we had yes. Sheikh Abu Alia on our stream yes. and he said that the way that you find a Sheikh is that number one they have to have come from a reputable recognized establishment of education okay that's the first thing number two uh, they should themselves be recognized as a sheikh by other sheikhs. In other words, there should be a fairly unanimous opinion about this individual, that he is indeed learned or she is indeed learned, and that they are capable and correct in giving fatwa and they're giving... There are many... I'm not commenting on this specific issue, but there are many people who claim to be sheikh. Okay. But in fact, that they're not sheikh. Okay. And, well, and how, that, do, it, how do somebody like me, and now you said, yeah, they have to be, how do I find their names? I go put this guy name there and see if he's really a sheikh. And I, we can, so if you, you if made you the go, whole nation of it, the whole nation yeah, brother, of it. Brother, Yel, Yel, brother, like Yelmaz, brother Yelmaz, I'll give you an example. So if you know that there are some well established sheikhs in your country or in your area, you can always, that many of the scholars, many of the people are referring to them as sheikh. You can go to them and say, this person here, is he sheikh? Should I trust his teaching? Should I listen to what he's saying? And this is what he has said to me. And let a, let a qualified sheikh, something that the people all recognize, the imam of the masjid and the imams of the masjids, they may unanimously agree that this particular person is a sheikh. Go and speak to this person. Then you find that person, and you just as we would find any academic or any person of of education, uh, and this is what we should do. This stream, brother, is for specifically dawa questions. If you if you want to email us, then we can inshallah send you the email from the Sheikh uh, Abu Alia to explain what the different criteria and how you actually look for a Sheikh. Inshallah, Jazakallah khair for coming on, brother. Okay, thank you very much. Difficult one for us to get into. I thought you said all Ethiopians are white people, but is it wild who was saying? Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the problem is we have to be very careful. Uh, as I said to you, there are lots of people who, I mean, people call me Sheikh. Well, he and, did. He did as he came on, didn't he? Exactly. And, uh, and subhanAllah, uh, I'm not even a student of knowledge, let alone shape. Yeah, can't shape always or something like like a term of endearment as well, like for someone. Yeah, I understand. Uh, it can be a, t- a term of endearment, but the reality is that you know, Sheikh is somebody. You're talking about a completely different, uh, you know, individual of of of, of stature and study, Subhanallah. And, and uh, brother, all, all that you would have to do is just contact the person directly and give his view, and they can explain or they can maybe change. And yeah. that's all you would have yeah. to do. I'm going to make it easy for him, inshallah. So if we can move on, that would be great. Inshallah. Uh, interesting podcast. You're um, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I just wanted to say, may Allah bless you guys. May Allah keep you guys steadfast and may Allah give you guys patience. MashaAllah, you guys are doing a good job. May Allah reward you guys abundantly. And may Allah give us all Salt sincerity and guide us all to the straight path, the path which Allah is pleased with. And I will leave you guys with that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ameen. 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 That was an easy one to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to deal with. Subhanallah. Okay, so who is next? I don't, I don't, are we, we're not going to get... Um, uh, let's have a look. Who, who's next? Uh, can somebody tell me if they verified themselves in the back, uh, back chat? 
Should we give them a chance now to bury them for themselves? Yeah, so if you guys can just uh, quickly put your cameras on, please, uh, Akram and uh, uh, Daguppy Baby, if you can put your cameras on. Halisa, the Scottish Achi, if you can put your cameras on, we can see you, then we can get you on, inshallah. Okay, the Scottish uh, Ach, I will get you on uh, uh, next. Hello, brother. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you all? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So basically, yeah, uh, what it is is I'm just some questions, and you know what it is myself. I'm 21 years old, right? And the thing is, for me, I've just come back onto my dean. So, I just uh, what I'm here is of maybe a few questions that could maybe help people around my age, if you could give them answers or give me some answers that could maybe you know like help people uh, my age who are also thinking. Yeah, brother, maybe, can you just maybe... speak a little bit? Can you just speak a little bit more into the microphone? It's a, yeah, yeah. It's a bit Is that quiet. better? That's a, that's that... a bit better. Yes, yes. Yeah. Can you understand what I'm saying? Because I know my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can do. Yes, we can. Yeah. yeah. We've got all the Scottish people in our group, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, just a few questions. The first question would be: See when you see, it's for like younger people, like looking out. So when I wanted to come back to Islam, so when I started wanting to look for answers I couldn't it's really hard honestly like maybe it's just where I live in Glasgow but what would be the best pathway to find like a, maybe a methodology or find somewhere to go along like find a, a path to go along would you would you say go to the mosque and go to the masjid or would you would you say like do you know what because when I done that so sometimes I go to the mosque right over here, like last time I went to the mosque and there was like three, four people there, only three, four people and the thing was they were older and what they said, I heard them speaking, they were speaking in Urdu, but what they were saying is they were saying why why did you leave the door open look, somebody's coming in and I felt, I, I, I honestly, I was about to pray Asr and I was just, I just felt I just walked up and left because I was like these people, the people of the mosque, the committee they don't even want us in the mosque and I felt, obviously, yeah. for me, I don't know if that, I, I'm just assuming that that doesn't happen everywhere, but also assuming that it probably does happen a lot as well. So yeah. one, of the, one of my main questions is, is like a methodology. What would you use, um, like, refer or would be a good way to go around learning or want to come back to the dean? And what would be the first, most important step? A teacher that's well known in the community and his teachings within the context of the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, and the way you can verify that is uh, using the example of what Brother Abbas said before, is get other scholars that as well know within the community to verify what he's saying uh, as a reputable teacher would be my advice. Um, yeah. For, right. so for, me, for me, maybe anyway, I might just give you as an email uh, if you can get in touch because see, for me again, again, I don't know if, if a lot of other young people are like this. But see, trying to actually find out these things when you don't know the circles or you don't know the community, it's, it's pretty hard, you know what I mean? So like, I can't see, I know what you've just said, you've given me an answer, but I don't know where to go for that. Mm. I, I, I think I'm missing a, a misunderstanding something here. I thought you said it's something to do with told to shut the door in Udo and you didn't understand what they were saying. Did I miss I, that? That, that, that? That happened to me. So basically what I was saying was, when I now that I'm starting to get back into my dean, I started to go to the masjid. Right. And now when I was going to the masjid, there was only like I'm saying, there was three, four people there. Right. Three or four people, and there were older people, and they must have been part of the committee or whatever. But what I'm saying is, what they made me feel like I didn't, I shouldn't be there. Like, honestly, that's mm -hmm. what it felt like. Like I walked in, and they were like, "Why have you left the door open?" Like you were saying to each other, and oh, don't. Why have you don't left worry the door about them. open? Like, that's not the reason you're there. I'll be honest I with know, you, bro. Yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. When I go to the masjid, I just go to the masjid. Alhamdulillah. People deal with it or not deal yeah. with it. You know, you people not, used to not, say, yeah, yeah. That wasn't don't worry about people, man. Yeah. No, but he's, he's saying if you've got a young Muslim, where would you direct them? I, I wouldn't necessarily direct them to a masjid. Um, in my experiences of masjids, I, I, I think mean, places that like my era, point. places like, I mean, maybe a teacher as well. That's just my personal opinion. No, I my think experience. even small masjids, I disagree. I think even small masjids, you can go there and you can educate them. Just by being there, just by doing that, like, I'm, I'm Muslim. So if you, if you so had a 20 20 years years old. Old. See, for me, like, well, what the point was is that it, 
when I wanted to go, maybe I wanted to ask them some questions, and but when I heard that, I didn't feel welcome, so I didn't want to ask some questions, and I just left. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's what, I mean, that's like the point I was making. So it was maybe like, is there some other route or some other maybe path or way or methodology or whatever, anything? All right, like, okay, sorry, it's nice. Yeah. So, once it, so you went to the mosque, you felt unwelcome, you, you yeah, were basically. speaking in their language, telling you to do something you didn't understand what they were saying. You thought, okay, right, you made me feel unwelcome, so I'm not going to ask you anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah basically, yeah. All right. So, okay. Mashallah, you know, this is 21st century. I mean, we don't have to rely on our locals anyway. No. We just, hmm. there's, no, yeah. there's so many online chefs and such yeah. who deal with these questions yeah. and answers. And there's not that many questions, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, See, and, and you know, I, yeah. I've, I've told old men off. I've had to. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. It's just, well, what are you doing? You know, I actually, learned, I'll be honest with you, right? There's one time, yeah, I've told this story a few times. There was a Bengali old man who would never give me <clears> salam. I literally would, I'd see him coming down the road. And at one point, I actually stood in front of him and put my hand out and said, Salam alaikum. And he just yeah. went around me. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking, SubhanAllah, what do I do here? So I learned <laughs> very little Bengali. <laughs> Bala Sasa. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's all I learned. Bala Sasa. Yeah. Next time he was coming, I stepped out. I said, Bala Sasa, Sasa, Salam alaikum. Big smile on his face while he comes to <coughs> Broken. So sometimes we have to understand, you, you know, there are people in a community, if they are speaking a different language, maybe make an effort, learn the language. I mean, I've yeah. learned, subhanAllah, <laughs> to greet in everyone's language. So if you're Afghanistan Farsi, I give you Shukurasti. If you're yeah. uh, Pakhtun, I give you Sangaya. If you're uh, Gujarati, I give you Kemcho. If you're Bengali, I give you Apni Kamonasen. If you're Turkish, I give you Nasusen. Give you your mother tongue. SubhanAllah, <laughs> breaks eyes like nothing else. People love to yeah. hear a greeting in their mother tongue. So sometimes there's a bit of effort yeah, on our yeah. part. As we're we're yeah, the ones true. who've reverted to this, converted to this um, new way of life. Well, They've right. been probably going for years and years and years, and this could be strange to them. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, sometimes true. we have to make a bit of effort as well. It's not all upon everyone else. We ourselves. No, you're right, yeah. that, that's what I would say in my uh, personal uh, experience. I don't get me wrong. I've been a Muslim now, alhamdulillah, 20 years. Um, but it took me time, and then I realized that now, as soon as you should see the smile on old men's faces when you yeah. greet them in their language, yeah. it is another level. And, and then you're done, and then they show all their friends. So, alhamdulillah, that's what that's that would be my advice. All right, and, uh, yeah, go talk, on. talk to him, Ron, if you want to, inshallah, make a point. Uh, no, I think the brothers are giving good advice, inshallah. So if, you, if you're going to email us as bro, just email us and we can uh, yeah. maybe direct you to someone who can guide you maybe online, inshallah, initially. Yeah, because um, well there's, well. to be, there's bound to be a good community where you are that you can engage with. And and, and I'd also re-emphasize the point from Brother Hamza, just be a slightly a bit more, um, don't, don't be so easily offended by people's actions. Maybe they're not intending to be rude by what they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, elderly. I mean, an old person telling you to close the door. I mean, that's just the standard. No, 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 no. no. Like he was yeah. basically what happened was he said to his friend or whoever he was asked, "Why have you left the door open? Somebody's come in." Yeah, so and that wasn't were... directed at you. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's just we have to sometimes maybe sort of you know just give people the benefit of the doubt. Inshallah, I think, think the best of yeah, that's true. That's true. Other people, Inshallah, I'm gonna make it easy for you. But give us an email, inshallah, and we'll be able to maybe elaborate a bit further and, and put you in touch yeah, with uh, uh, the There's just a couple more questions as well. Like, this maybe for just people listening or younger people listening, is what if you're wanting to come back to Dean? Obviously, your your prayer, your your salah is, in my opinion, probably the main thing. Obviously, start praying whether you sin, don't sin, when you're just still sinning, whatever. But what would be the best way to start learning knowledge, in your opinion, like? The first steps, they, they literally the first steps. So, brother, we've got we've got mashallah on our website. We've got yeah. a new Muslims link, um, and mm -hmm. it's actually not just really for new Muslims. Uh, it is in no. fact for, yeah. for Muslims who also want to learn the basics. 100%, so it's yeah. got mashallah things like wudu. It's got things like prayer, yeah. how to pray, when to pray. It's got quite a lot of details. Uh, but if inshallah, if you go to that to our website uh -huh. and then go to the link, you'll find that helpful. Um, we, if you email us, inshallah, we'll send you a lot more because, mashallah, uh, brother, um, 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 uh, brother Ayaz on our team, yeah. he he no normally has quite a lot of resources that he can also send you. And and again, if you email us, we can inshallah try to find out through some organisations somebody local to you. 
uh, or somebody online that you can do yeah. courses and lessons with inshallah so we can we can we'll try and help you in, in any way we can okay that's brilliant cheers and right. uh just wanted to say yeah may allah guide you all bless us all as well i've been watching um, this for so long but honestly it's in the last 18 months honestly before the last 18 months i was like i didn't even pray but see now in all your videos honestly wallahi like i've never been so sure in my life like see until 18 months ago until I came across your videos and I started notes and stuff. Honestly, no, no word of a lie. I'm not, I'm not joking. I, I could lose everything in this life now, but see the things that you have taught me and the things I've read, the evidences, the proofs, I could lose everything in this life. But you know what? One thing I'll say, I know 100%. I'm, I know, I'm not even 99. I'm 100% sure. I, I know I'll always have Allah. <laughs> no matter what. I know about Allah. I'm so sure. Like, I can lose my mum, my dad, my family, my kids, my cousins, everything. Internet, homeless. But I will still always love and be guided from Allah. Honestly, like that. And honestly, I want to just thank you a lot because a lot of that, like a lot of that is down to you guys. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Remember us in the dua, inshallah. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, you know, I ask Allah to purify our intentions and accept inshallah. Uh, what we do. It's very, very heartwarming when our brothers and sisters say that it's an influence. We sometimes don't yeah, realize because we're in this bubble. We're in this bubble. We're just sort of in this screen. We think we're just talking to one another. We're just talking to people that are here. We sometimes don't realize mm -hmm. that. Uh, you know, just how mashallah Allah, you know, has, has beautified this deen to such an extent that, you know, when we speak about it, Allah opens up people's hearts and gives them hidayah, give them, gives them guidance. And to be, to man, be a part of that is, is truly uh, a, a gift of Allah. And we're, 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 we're very grateful. May Allah inshallah accept it from all of us and, and purify our intentions. Inshallah. Uh, remember inshallah. us and our families in your dua, inshallah. Just one last, just one last advice. I don't know. Yeah, right. Are you a my brother? Are you, are, are, if you like, we reverted if you like. No, no, I, I was born Muslim, but that's what I'm saying. Alhamdulillah. I've got, okay. I've got so this is advice to, to anybody yeah. who goes to a masjid that maybe is a strange masjid to them and they may feel out of place and such. Yeah. Yeah. Go there before the Salah starts and just sit down and start reading. Get in the habit of maybe just going in 10 minutes before the Adhan yeah. and start reading the Quran. The Adhan goes, pray your Sunnah. And people will see that. Do you get me? And yeah. then people will yeah. see you, they'll start giving you Salams. And this is how it will grow. So this is advice to everybody, even, you know, reverse themselves mm -hmm. as well. Go to the Masjid, sit down and just read. I used to do this a lot. I used to pick up Marafu Quran. Which is a tafsir, one of the uh, tafsirs of the Quran, and I used to sit and read it before the salah. And people see this, and and then they'll they'll say, Subhanallah, this brother, look at him, mashallah. Oh, wait, see it. <laughs> you, get, you get me? So this is an advice. Um, if you want to break a masjid in that sense, just go early, pray. Sorry, read, pray your sunnah, pray the salah. Alhamdulillah, do it habitually. Fajr and Isha, I would recommend. And then, inshallah, um, you'll see the, the way the people the people of the masjid, the the the, the care, you'll, you'll probably get to know the caretaker of the masjid, and the imams will recognize you, and you'll grow there. Subhanallah. That's what I did anyway. All right. So I think. Well, uh, I did more of like this. Any <laughs> any any last words before we inshallah end the stream? Oh, we've got one other brother on. Okay, so Michael. <laughs> so, uh, do you have uh, any? A uh, lot of time or few? Uh, yes, yeah, so brother, if you ask your question that were related, we'll try and answer it as best we can. Because yeah, I heard that uh, Dawood Clinic had mixed up with Frozen Source, so I can't talk about any subject, not only uh, just uh, Dawood related. Or... No, we, we actually are sticking to Dawood Clinic, but we've obviously had some brothers who've sort of taken the conversation to perhaps slightly off topic. But if you want to, inshallah, email us or come on to the next stream uh, where you can perhaps ask something completely different, uh, we, we'd be happy to have you on, inshallah. Uh, so where there will be uh, flaws is yours? or Yeah, if you come on and the floor is, is your, floors is yours. If, if you have some urgent question... Uh, bus, bus, there, there is no more floor is yours. Oh, there isn't. We're not doing floor is yours at all now. No, all, all we're doing is every two weeks, Dawa Clinic, every two weeks, Perfect Storm. Okay. So Dawa Clinic is for uh, Muslims to ask questions. Okay, and not necessarily Dawa related, no? Well, what else question they'll ask us? No, but I'm just saying the brother wants to talk about something completely different, he's saying. Like what? 
Okay, brother Akram, why don't you quickly ask your question then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm intrigued now. What's your question, mate? Well, uh, I was talking about a special hadith. Uh, if uh, you know, and that hadith says that uh, my uh, community, the lifespan of my community, will not last more than one thousand five hundred years. If uh, you heard about that hadith or not? Uh, I've not heard of that hadith, Doctor Imran. What's that hadith that? again? Where, where is it from? Uh, I got a, a seat. I can. Uh, Put it in the, the chat uh, with many sources, it says, uh, and it's related to in order that compare each community lifespan on uh, on the on all uh, day. Sun, like uh, it says, that the Jews will be from the Fajr until the door, the Christian from the door until the Asr, and the Muslim from the Asr until the Maghreb. Does that have? any link with the lifespan of uh, each of these communities? It's just a euphemism, yeah, even yeah. If, if it's authentic. What, do you th what, do you, what is it your problem with the hadith, my brother? If, oh, if it's but, there, I haven't uh, it, no? does, this, does the hadith about uh, 1,100 years uh, really means that our community lifespan is really from... 1,500, uh, or it's just a metaphor, maybe, about something else. I'm not aware of the hadith. I think you'd have to send the hadith onto the email, and then we can get someone to look at it for you, inshallah. Or if you can send it in the chat, maybe. Okay, I'll send it in the chat. I think it probably is better, Brother Akram, because it's uh, this is sort of a vague thing that I'm, I, I'm not sure about, because uh, it seems to be more of a understanding, and there's a language issue here. So if you email us the hadith, Okay. What we can do is we can look through it for you, and then we can try and come to an understanding or get someone who can give you an understanding of it. Um, because you 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 said something about us of the different salars and, uh, yes, that's and then you, so if you can yeah so if you can email them and also specifically put your your concern about this because obviously you're concerned about it, which is why you've come. Yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come. You would have just asked somebody local to you, and they would have told you the answer. So you've. You're concerned about this. So tell us what your concern is. What is it that you're worried about from this? Because uh, because uh, I don't want to know that <clears throat> the Islam it talks about the end times and all of stuff. And many people, many mom says it's soon, it's soon. So I want to have a timeline. Maybe yeah. So we're, there's no timeline given. we nobody knows when the day of judgment is, my brother. Yeah. yeah? Not, I, I think what he's not, just saying, to be honest with you, from what yeah. I've briefly yeah. understood it's basically saying first came the jews then came the christians and now come the muslims yeah and what yeah, yeah but the hadith says about the lifespan of them that's what what, what, what do you mean by life you're muted about what do you mean by lifespan because the duration of them uh, what's, what's, the, what's the duration 1500 uh, years i think you said 1500 is that what you're saying no no yeah. that's what he's no he's saying that because the muslims have been here for 1400 years Oh right, yeah. that's where you got that figure from. Okay. Yes. I'm not talking about, uh, for example, Brother the... Akram. If you can email us the hadith, yeah. inshallah. Okay. But as I just Brother Imran, as Brother Imran has said, we yeah. will take a look at it and we'll inshallah maybe consult a, a scholar, yes. and then we will try to come back to you. It's pointless us discussing. Well, the a hadith. few people, a few people have done it in the chat. Um, Islam community said the hadith is fabricated. Uh, the hadith uh, is in Ahmed, is rated as weak. Okay. So w we don't worry about these things. Yeah. yeah. Why is it worrying you? Because uh, according to many hadiths, uh, uh, many things that the... Uh, I know, I, I'm not talking about the, the last day judgment. We don't know, but the great end time scenes that maybe will occur in our, uh, in our century that worry, maybe it will be... So, right, is, so what, you, what you're concerned about is the coming of the Dajjal and all that business, and you think the signs are here, and you think that Hadith actually marries up with it. And they can examine their lunch reports. Good afternoon. All right. Akram, Jazakallah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that his dad telling him off or what? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>
Okay. Okay. So the brother will email us, inshallah, and then we can go from there. Uh, brother Abbas, if you'd just like to uh, wrap up, inshallah. Yeah. So my apologies to the brothers who are still waiting. We we've uh, still got quite a few of you waiting, uh, but we're not going to be able to get you on. It's it's nearly half past midnight here. Uh, we have to be sort of respectful of the neighbours as well, and um, you know some of us have early starts in the morning. I know, brother, um, brother Jordan and uh, Doctor Imran. I don't know about Dan and, and Hamza, but generally people do have have early starts. So uh, please excuse us on that. Um, we've had some nice discussions today, um, and perhaps some rather sort of confusing ones. Um, but I, I, I think that uh, uh, again, may Allah inshallah guide us, keep us on the straight path. Um, and whatever we do may be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatever good we have said on the stream uh, is from Allah whatever wrong or bad we've we've said is from ourselves uh, please remember us in your dua inshallah remember us uh, uh, you know in all of your prayers and our families uh, and that pray to Allah that Allah keeps our intentions clean and clear uh, and accepts inshallah what we do uh, Brother Hamza, when's the next stream you've got going on on uh, Hamza's den? Uh, um, I've got a. Uh, oh, let's push the camera one second. I've got a. Uh, obviously, I've got my Sunday live. Um, EF Dow has got uh, historicity on Sunday evening. Um, I'm doing a really nice recording tomorrow, which is look out for is with Ali Dower and his dining to Jan Netflix. And where he's taking, <laughs> we're going to go, we're meeting for Juma, and then we're going to go to a restaurant and critique it. And I don't think he realizes the, the, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't think he realizes how I critique food. And the funny thing was, he asked me, what is your favorite or worst food? And I said, look, I don't do Turkish food. I can't do Turkish food. I nearly starved to death in Istanbul because I couldn't do the food. Oh, but I was so he goes, right. We're doing Turkish food. <laughs> so tomorrow, going to a Turkish restaurant and then going to critique it. And Gordon Ramsay's got nothing on me. So on, uh, I love Turkish food. Uh, uh, Dr. Imran, uh, when's the next video coming out on your channel, inshallah? Uh, uh, soon, inshallah. Just uh, make dua that Allah makes me, uh, gives me the topic to complete. Um, any, anything that we've said from, that's wrong is from ourselves and uh, Anything that's right is from Allah. May Allah um, make us sincere in everything that we do, inshallah, brothers and sisters. Pray for us. Uh, pray for each other. Uh, may Allah uh, protect all the, the Muslims around the world who are suffering. People who are not aware, there is a march uh, for the Uyghurs, and I'm sure Brother Jordan is going to mention that. So listen to carefully to what he has to say, inshallah. Brother Jordan. Inshallah. Yeah, so Saturday outside the Chinese embassy at 12.30. So we're going to do a mass, a mass prayer. The Azan is going to be playing loudly outside the Chinese embassy. Um, and lots of speakers there, Mohammed Hijab, Hamza Saucers, plenty of sheikhs, Mozambique. Um, yeah, I, th I think from the looks of this one, so I remember attending one with Sabor ages ago where there was just like 30 people. Last one was a few hundred. This one, I think the, the police have closed the roads. It's going to be massive. So it'd be good to see as many as you there as possible. Um, holding the Chinese government to account for the atrocities that are still going on all this time later. Nothing's changed. Uh, they're still just you know going on and, and, and oppressing the Uyghurs. So um, I think just being there, and if, if you can't make it, try and share some of the posters that we've been putting around uh, and spread the awareness. And uh, inshallah, this will be the last protest because hopefully we'll start making a difference. Alhamdulillah. So Jordan, I've heard that much of very important people are going to be giving speeches there. Um, and perhaps one of the most <laughs> important person is oh, going to yeah. be you as well, mashallah. I am, I am. I got, I, I snuck my name in amongst all the big boys. Alhamdulillah. Uh, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So I've, I've, uh, Imran's helped me prepare my speech. So uh, trying to make it as controversial as possible, as powerful as possible. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try and make, I'm going to try and make it down for that actually. So Jordan, what time and uh, what's the location for people? So be there twelve thirty, Great Portland Street, um, the Chinese Embassy, basically it's directly outside the Chinese Embassy on the road. So don't be late because, like I say, there's a mass prayer, which I think will be a beautiful sight. Um, and like I say, the whole road's going to be closed. So get there early because I think I think to be honest, it's going to be tough. Um, it's going to be tough to even see anything if you're there late. It's really going to be a lot of people. They've they've got coaches from cities driving people in um it's been spread across all of the muslim platforms are you doing a speech you said i'm doing a speech yeah oh my god it's been like a beatles concert women anyway brother dan any last words before we go inshallah 
No, it's been a pleasure uh, doing a stream with you guys. Alhamdulillah, uh, Doctor Eloquent as uh, usual. Mashallah, Tabarakallah. Hamza Harsh, love it, bro. And yeah, may Allah uh, grant us a tough week to carry on doing what we're doing, inshallah. Yeah. And I hope if you yeah. have me back in the future again, inshallah, uh, it'll be nice. On on this though, because I'm not really a debater, I can maybe give a little bit of advice, two pence here and there, but I'm not like a big debater. So inshallah, if you don't mind. I'm done. I was going to say one last thing to people in the comment section because they're asking, is there no more open forum? Um, so just to... Oh, stupid camera. Anyway, so just so you know the format. So Sundays stay the same. One Sunday will be open forum. One Sunday will be historicity stream. The Sunday we go to Speaker's Corner, there'll be no stream. So Sundays is not changing. The only thing that's changing is a Thursday. So rather than doing something every Thursday, we're going to be doing something every other Thursday. So today, for example, we've done... Dawa Clinic. So next Thursday, there won't be a stream, but there will be an arena. The following week, there will be a stream, which will be Perfect Storm. Yeah. The following week, there'll be no, and there'll be an arena. So it's only Thursday that's been affected by the new change. That's all. So. And inshallah, the Monday. floor is yours. Is basically Dawa Clinic now, because it's to be honest with you, it's the same kind of questions we get on floor is yours and Dawa Clinic. So why not combine it and just make it one? Inshallah. So just so you're aware. No, there's no arena tomorrow. I'll just say, <laughs> God, when, the, when there's a Thursday stream on EF Tower, there's no arena. That's the way you should know. So if you've seen the Thursday stream, relax. There's no arena. You've got Friday off. Chill out. All right. Bam. And uh, every alternate Monday, we're still going to be doing the Abu Alia stream. So this Monday coming, uh, there will be, inshallah, an Abu Alia stream with myself. And we'll we'll schedule that in as, as soon as possible. Jazakallah khair for all of you who tuned in. Uh, and again, please remember us in your dua, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.